What a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation, purchase of God. Wow. Born of the Spirit, washed in His blood. Keep praying, saints. I want to I hear the piano here, brother. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. My Savior, all the Lord. Keep praying, saints. Perfect submission. All is at rest. That's what happened when you pray in the spirit like this. I, in my Savior, am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. While we pray, while we pray, we're going to continue to pray just a few more minutes. Let's focus now praying for those ministering in Israel. Those young people who are bringing the gospel to their people. Can we lift our hands and pray for them right now? Come on. Pray in the Spirit. All the day long. This is my soul. This is my song, raising my Savior, all the day Keep praying, keep praying, come on, people. Keep praying. Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Sinking sand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Keep praying just a few more minutes. His oath, his covenant, his blood support me in the whelming flood. While all around my soul gives way, he all I hope and stay on Christ's holy Lord I stand all of the ground is sinking sand all of the ground is 
Can we focus just before we go? Oh, I want you people to focus just because, see, God is in this tonight. How many of you feel the anointing already here? Focus on praying now for the Christians inside China who are under persecution. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. The changing one, redeemed through Calvary. Thank God, I've seen the lily push its way up through the stubborn sword. I believe in miracles for. One more time, keep praying, saints, for those in China. I believe in miracles. I've seen a soul set free. It's miraculous. The changing one redeemed through Calvary. Thank you, Lord. I've seen the lily push its way up through the stubborn soul. I believe in miracles, for, for I believe in God. Keep praying just a little bit longer here, a little bit longer. that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. Thank you, Lord. And the fairest of 10,000 in my blessed Lord I see. Oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of the thousand in my blessed Lord I see. Now join me, saints. Father, we come tonight in Jesus' name. And we thank you for what you're about to do tonight. Magnify your holy name. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Touch your people tonight. Anoint each one again tonight. Fill each one with the Holy Spirit, I pray. In Jesus' wonderful name. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. I exalt thee, Lord. Lift your hands to him, saints. For thou, O Lord, are high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. For thou, O Thou art 
exalted far above all gods. Lift your voice everywhere. We exalt. of all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord. We've come to worship you, Lord. We've come to bless your holy name, Lord. You are our God.
His name is Jesus. Name above all. Beautiful Savior. Glorious Lord. Emmanuel. God is with us. Blessed Redeemer. Living Word. Jesus, Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord. Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living word, once again with the hands uplifted, Jesus. Jesus, name above all all names. He's a beautiful Savior, saints. And He is a glorious Lord. Truly glorious Lord. Emmanuel. God is with us. Blessed Redeemer. Living world. When you think about these beautiful words we've been singing, Jesus, name above all names. There is no name higher than the name of Jesus. Beautiful Savior. None as beautiful as the Lord. Glorious Lord. Glorious Lord. Absolute perfection. Emmanuel. Meaning God with us. That he should dwell in your hearts and mind, what a miracle. Blessed Redeemer. He came to redeem every soul. Hallelujah. When you think about these words you've sung, then you want to sing. I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, holy God, to you all praise is due. I stand in awe. I stand Holy God to you
once again tell him with hands uplifted I stand I stand Holy God. Bless your people tonight, Lord with strength in the inner man. Bless your people tonight with a love we've never known. Give us a love for you we've never known. Baptize us anew with a fresh baptism of love. For you, Lord, you declared in your word, for thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. We cannot do this on our own, Lord. You declared, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy soul, with all thy strength. We cannot do this, Lord, without your help, without your power without your ability in us. So we offer ourselves as instruments of love to love you. Pour your love in us. Oh, people, lift your hands and ask him to do it for you. That when we sing to you, Lord, we'll mean it. Lord, I love you and I worship you. You are worthy to be praised. Mana, mana, cantile moral folk. Pielbe, pielbe, kintimentele. Oh, Holy Spirit, baptize us with that love, with that loyalty, with that commitment to the Lord. We cannot have that without your help without your power working and at work within us. So when we sing it now, Lord, we want it more than anything to truly say, Lord, I love you and I worship you. You are worthy to be praised Lord I love you and I worship you you are worthy to be praised tell him six Lord I love you and I worship you. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised.
worship you. You are worthy to be praised. You're worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Lord, I Harmonize your wonderful world. Blessed Son of God. Receive your healing now. sick in body here and in your homes place your hand on that problem as I pray God himself will touch you for he declared in his word I am the God that healeth thee he declared in his word he was wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities Chastise for our peace. With the stripes we are healed. Be healed now. In Jesus' name. Receive your healing now. In Jesus' name. Once again, Hallelujah. 
Asthma is being healed. I rebuke it. Skin cancer has been healed. I rebuke it. Men are being healed all over the world right now. The neck injury has been healed. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Arthritis in the hips, very bad. Begin to move. That's right. Release your faith. I rebuke that pain. The blood disease, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. The tumor, be gone. In the name of Jesus. This miracle is happening. Receive it. To the same tune, Holy Spirit. Holy. Someone who's deaf has just been healed. A heart disease is being healed. There's a crippled man getting healed. Crippled in your left leg. Move that leg, brother. God's powder is all over you. This miracle is happening all over the world. I stretch my hands in faith towards you, and I believe God for you. Be healed now. Be healed now. In Jesus' name. Receive your healing now. In Jesus' name. I see a girl named Liz. And Liz, you haven't been able to have children. The doctors told you there is absolutely no way. I'm here to tell you the Lord is changing that. In the name of Jesus, all of you stretch your hands towards this camera and pray. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing now. You will have a boy. And I see his name, Amos. You're going to call him Amos from the Bible, Amos. The little boy will be a man of God from his birth pray all of you in the spirit all over here rise and be healed in the name of Jesus come on Bruce just receive your healing pick up the key please there's a, there's a blind man uh, uh, you feel tremendous fire on you. All of you pray in the spirit. Come on. Let faith arise in your soul. All of you who are sick, rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. He will touch you and make Keep praying, keep praying, saints. If by faith you will reach out to him, I promise you this, he will meet your every need. He promised it. He will respond to that cry in your heart. He will touch you and set you free. Now, while the people are praying in the spirit, I'm singing this prophetically. Rise and be healed. Keep praying in the Holy Ghost, saints here. In the name of Jesus. Let faith, let faith arise in your soul. All over the world, come on. Rise and be healed. In the name of Jesus. He will touch you. I see that guy right now with his leg. I see him moving it. Make your whole. Pick up the key. I'm telling you, I'm seeing it happening. Rise and be healed. In the name of Jesus. 
happening all over. Let faith arise in your soul. Rise and be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. He will touch you. He will heal you and make you whole. Tell it's, yes, it's, it's, it's happening everywhere. Just another 30 seconds, pray in the Holy Ghost, saints. Lord, I receive all things are possible. Quick. I'm not going to have you come down here tonight. I'm going to have you just receive your, your healing right where you are in this audience. Come on, lift your hands and receive it. In, in, in your homes, come on. Lord, I receive. Just say, Lord, I receive. All things are possible, and they are. Lord, I receive. Wonderful Lord Jesus. Lord, I receive. It's happening there in your homes. Lord, I receive. All things are possible. Lord, I receive. Now, all of you that know someone who's sick, pray for them right now. Come on. Lift your voice, pray for someone you know. Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. All things are possible. Very, very possible. It's actually happening. Lord, I receive. Sweet Jesus, Lord, I receive. That's right. That's all you got to do. Lord, I receive. All things are mine and possible. Lord, I receive. I'm going to sing it one more time while you all pray. Lord, I receive. It's happening in this audience and around the world. Lord, I receive. Some of you feel that heat all over you. All things are possible. Lord, I just receive. Dear Jesus, Lord, I receive. Thank God. Lord, I receive. Oh. Lord, I receive. How many of you feel in this audience? How many of you feel that God has touched you physically? Wave at me. Just, just, just wave. Yeah. Well, you receive that, all right? In your homes, you receive that. Now take your seats here. Take your seats. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. For with God, nothing is impossible. It's not possible to be impossible. Listen, listen. And with God, every promise shall come through. For we know surely all things He will do. Did you hear that? I don't care what you're facing. With God, there's nothing, nothing is impossible. A little girl, Louisiana, back in the mid-80s, showed up to my meeting. I'm preaching at a church. I see this girl, big, and I mean big head, little body. Her legs were about her arms, but her face looked um, like a massive pumpkin. And the Lord spoke and said, tell the parents she will be healed in three weeks. So I laid hands and prayed, and faith was just strong. That girl sang in our crusades. 
and we showed the before and after. What was her name? Do you remember? Missy. She would come to the Crusades and sing and show the picture on the screens. So I can tell you, with God, nothing is impossible. You know what? If you're believing for, for something that doctors say, no hope, lift your hands and believe right now. Come on. It's not possible. It's not possible to be impossible. For with God, every promise will come through. Why? For we know surely all things he will do. I've seen more miracles than probably most people alive. I remember the lady we took to Catherine Kuhlman that was all crippled so bad that every part of her body was twisted. Sat on a wheelchair. And that woman in a service began to untwist. Nobody laid, laid hands on her. When she came up, she was straight like that. While the whole time on the bus, she was like, like this. She was bent over like somebody took a piece of rubber and that woman's head was like this. She, look, she, she looked like the hunts of Notre Dame. I'm not kidding you. And we helped her up and down the bus, myself and a young man named Al Parachin. And she in the service starts. I freaked out. You see a woman for two days like this. For two days. With her husband carrying her purse. And she's sitting in a seat. She was quite witty. Because she knew that Catherine Kuhlman did not allow wheelchairs on the main floor. She said, hey boys, don't let them see my wheelchair. Because she knew if the wheelchair was there, she had to go down the basement. She said, leave that wheelchair on the bus and carry me in. We ran down that aisle. I will never forget Syria Mosque, 1975. Good Friday service, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's still there, that building. We ran, we, we ran down those, uh, those aisles praying, Lord, blind the ushers, blind the ushers, blind the ushers. Because we didn't want to see those ushers. Because they, they would have stopped us and had that dear lady go down the basement. In the seat. Now you, th you think about somebody for two days walking around. Well, she wasn't walking. She was. And here she's like this. And then she starts doing this. In the seat. I, I freaked out. I went. Ha, ha, ha. I was hitting Jim Porter, uh, who was next to me. Pointing. Because ha, ha, ha. I, couldn't, I, I couldn't say anything. I believe in miracles. For with God, come on, nothing, 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 nada, nada, nada is impossible. Lift your hands and thank Him. Come on. It's not possible. Dale, I want to hear that mic. Come on. It's not possible to be impossible. And with God, every promise will come through for you. For we know. Surely all things he can do. Oh, Francis Scott, dear Francis in Susan Mary, Ontario. That woman came, came up while I was preaching. Big metal brace on her leg. Wrapped around her waist. Attached to a shoe. And she comes up with her crutches. Doing this on the platform. She sits down on my chair. <laughs> my chair, when I was sitting up on the platform, like this. Her leg up like that. So I came up, I said, can I help you? She went and she spoke like a man. She said, my leg, my leg. I didn't know what was wrong with her leg. I wasn't too nice back then. <laughs> with, with age, I've gotten much nicer. I said, take it off. 
I'm not thinking straight because to take it off means uh, there's thousands of people sitting there watching this woman. She had a pair of pants on. And under that was a massive brace, metal brace. She stares at me. When I said, come on, come on, (laughs) take it off. A group of people surround her. She takes her pants down on the platform. (laughs) And then I got embarrassed. Oh, Lord, what's wrong with me, you know? And then there was nowhere to go. It was a high school auditorium with thousands of people there. Now she's all surrounded with ladies, with you name it, uh, so nobody could see nothing. She tore that brace off, and when the foot touched the floor, she screamed. Ah! She had no bone in the leg. And nobody told me. She didn't tell me what was wrong with her. She just said, my leg. God created bones in that woman. On the platform. The next day, the lady, that, the lady who was the Oprah Winfrey of the day in Canada was in the service. The lady who had the biggest show in Canada was in the service. She had her come on her show the next day and said to the whole country, she said, you need to go to Benny's meetings to, <laughs> in Sousa Marie. She talks about the lady. The next night, people are everywhere outside. Uh, a revival hit the city. They canceled the football game. That's a fact, that's a fact of my history. They canceled the football game because the newspapers were now running the miracles. For with God. Come on, man, let me hear you. Nothing is impossible. It's not possible. No way to be impossible. For with God, I've seen it. Every promise will come through. For we know Surely all things he will do. Philip Rantisi was a guy who walked into my service in Canada, wrapped from his neck down with a brace. Steel all around his body. I had a woman from Germany named Danielle. Boy, she was, she was a go-getter. She and her husband, Otto. Otto took care of me. He was an old guy, but man, he was like a farmer, you know, like tough. He would exercise with me every day, and he wore me out. He was, I don't know how old he was. I was in my 20s, and the guy was in his 60s. But Daniel, I'll never forget his wife, Daniel. She walked up to that guy in the lobby. Imagine the guy came in like a robot. That's how he walked. Before the service began, she said, take it off in the name of Jesus. His whole body began shaking, and all you heard is the metal making noises. They tore the brace, the whole thing, off his body before he walked in. They walk in with all the metal and the guy running down the aisle. You talk about the way to start a service. For with God, I've seen it. Nothing. I'm telling you, lift your hands to receive it. It's impossible. It's not possible to be impossible. Because with God, every promise in the Bible will come through. For we know surely all things He will do. I've seen miracles that would stun your head. A lady walks up with a On the platform in India, Chennai. 300,000 people there. You you were there, you saw it with your own eyes. A tumor, a massive tumor on her body fell right off her body. Cancer fell right off, splashed all over the platform. I mean, that thing fell right off and splashed. Bruce remembers that, don't, don't you? And there was a guy we had. That none of us liked him. (laughs) That guy was bad news. He was was a little 
tough to deal with. And I wasn't too nice back then. I said, pick it up. It was not nice of me to say, pick it up. That thing splashed everywhere. Pick it up. The poor guy had to pick it up. That was bad. But God forgave me. Thank God. Thank God that he forgave me. I've seen miracles more than you've got hair on your head. And I'm here to tell you there's nothing impossible with God. Lift your hands and shout hallelujah. All right. Oh, no. Come sing it for me. Sinaisha's song. The one I told you about. The one that's my favorite. Which instrument you want to play, brother? Okay. Come on, Arno. I'm walking in power. Yeah. I walk in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. You're walking in power. And you work in miracles. You live a life of favor. You live a life of favor. You live a life of favor. Say I know. Say I know. Say I know. I know who I am. We are a chosen generation. Call for to show his excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. Say, I know who I am. We are a chosen generation. Call for to show his excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. I know who, say, I know. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. Where He says I am. What He says I'm at. I, say I'm walking. I'm walking in power. I walk in miracles. I live a life of favor. Declare it. Say I walk. I walk in power. Yes, I walk in miracles. I live a life of favor. Everybody sing the Lord.
no. Sing that song for me that you got a track for. The track, the track, the track. Oh, the track. The track. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lift your hands all over this place. I've got rains in Afghanistan, Iran, everywhere. Your rains forever. We worship your majesty, oh God. We worship you. There's none can compare to all that you are to me, oh God. We worship you. Lord, we worship you. We lift our hands. Jesus, you're the Lord of all. All notes will sing your praise. We'll shout your name forever. You are the King. Worship your majesty, oh God. We will come and lift your hands all over this place and worship the King of Kings. There's none that can compare to all that you are. Do all that you are. We worship you. Sing it again. Can we give the Lord a mighty hand, please? <laughs> now, Ono, oh listen. I'm thinking of bringing the whole group here yes, sir. in February. Because yes. I'll, I'll talk to Pastor Osei and we'll make the arrangements. Amen.
Because I want you to come with the whole group and minister. Amen. So that's February. And I'll, I just feel the Lord wants to do something here. Yeah. The next time we come together. Amen. February 10. What's the date? February 10. That's two weeks after the beginning of the month. So we're talking a month from now. Because I just believe the Lord is going to do some amazing things this year. Amen. And we need to be prepared for it. Amen. You're anointed, girl. Can we give her a big God bless you? You know, we're, Love World is on now in India. So I welcome all the people in India. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand. Let me have a crescendo, brother. Bruce. All you in India, welcome, welcome, welcome. Love World is expanding now in the U.S. on DirecTV, Channel 366. You can watch us on the app, Live TV, mobile. And what God is doing is really remarkable. Many of you are, are watching on the BHM social media platforms. The last time we were here, I think we had something like 400 and something thousand people. It's amazing how many watch on social media. That's remarkable, really. All right, now listen, tomorrow night, you cannot miss it. Live on Love World, 5 p.m. I don't know how many of you here can show up, but I'm going to have the Kunamans minister tomorrow for the whole two hours. So if too many of you show up, we'll do it in the studio. We are planning on doing it in the Studio B, as we call it right now. Because God has anointed Hank in a powerful way and Brenda. Yes, give the Lord a mighty hand, will you? Later tonight, later tonight, I'm going to give them the platform for at least a good hour, maybe a little more, to minister to you. Because they have a word for America and to you personally. How many want to hear from God personally tonight? Well, just believe the Lord to do that tonight because they are accurate, balanced, anointed, thank God, and people of the word. And he's a pastor of a large church in Omaha. I'm saying it right, right? In Omaha. And, and when I saw him tonight, I said, I know you because I've seen him in our crusades and other places together. So that's tomorrow night live on Love World. And we are inviting you to come, you people in the studio, to come uh, to be ministered to. So I would recommend you show up as early as you can tomorrow. And right now, like I said, it'll be Studio B, but that may be too small, so we'll probably put you in here. Now, the other thing I want to say that I'm so yay, excited about. <laughs> I am... I am uh, about to release, woo, brother. You people don't know what I have in my, in my possessions. I have more Catherine Kuman than anyone on planet Earth. I just took all of it to a place called Video Magic, myself, because I wanted to do it on my own and pay for it on my own. When I used to work with Catherine Kuman's ministry, they gave me a lot and a lot and a lot of her teachings. I have more teachings of Catherine than any human being on the globe. Wow. Hundreds of hours of her teachings. So I took all that last week to a place called Video Magic down here, and they put it all on digital. Then I found... I didn't know what I had. I have so many Amy Sample McPherson, it'll bl bl blow the hair off your head. I found more Amy that I was given over, over the years. People have been giving me stuff for the last 45 years. I have John Dowie, 1903. You know who John Dowie was? Three of you. John Dowie shook America. There's a whole city named after, uh, uh, well, he named it Zion, Illinois. Zion, Illinois was started by John Dowie. 
If you go there today, every street has a Christian name. I found a tape among all the tapes I have from 1903. That's before Catherine's Day and Amy's Day. Of a sermon he preached. So when I go to Video Magic, the guy says to me, he says, oh, we only had trouble because I said, well, how are they all? He said, great. He said, except one tape, we had to fix it all up and help it and fix it. And I said, which one? Because I'm thinking Miss, Miss Schumann or Amy. He says, oh, John Dowie. I said, what? I have John Dowie? I have so many Branhams, A.A. Allens. I was given that stuff years ago. I have it in boxes. I said, you know what? It's time to let the body of Christ. I have TV programs of Catherine Kuhlman. I have stuff that will blow your head off. Radio programs, TV programs. Meetings. I, I have reel to reel. The guy said, You know what? We don't do reel to reel anymore. But he said, I know someone who can get it all, all off. I have albums. So finally, I said, You know, I'm just turned 68, 67. <laughs> well, I was careful with that one, huh? Because she always corrects me that lady right there. I just turned 67, so I'm, I'm safe now. Thank you very much. Well, anyways. I said, you know what? I don't want to keep that stuff in boxes. I want to bless the church with it. Yeah. And, and you can't believe the stuff we have. I interviewed Oral Roberts for three hours. We're the, I, I'm the only guy that ever sat down with Oral and said, tell him about your life. Lester Semerol, same thing. Rex Humbert, same thing. Morris Sorello, same thing. I just finished Pat Robertson. I did all those men, and nobody got that stuff except me. Well, CBN has the one with Pat, because we, we just did it. But I was with Oral sitting in this very room talking about his life. I went down to Sorello's home and did his, uh, the second part was in his home. The first part was right here. And, you know, these are great giants. And I'm on a tape, God willing, I'm gonna, I still have three more to go. I've got to do Jack Hayford. I got to do Kenneth Copeland and Lorne Cunningham because I believe these giants need to be heard because things that nobody knows, like with Pat, his staff did not know some stuff he shared on camera. I did not know it about his young days. He started CBN with $3. That's all he had is $3 to begin a massive network. Well, all that is going to be released soon in what I'm calling the Benihin Institute. It's got stuff, hundreds of hours of things about to be, about to be given to the whole world, really, with Catherine, with Oral, with so many more, Rex Humbard, and on and on and on. William Branham, A. A. Allen, amazing things that I have discovered in my own house. I have the entire service from Jerusalem, 1974, that nobody has except me. I have all the greats with Catherine, David Duplessis, Costa Dare, the Malachucks, on and on. Everybody is on the platform ministering. These are the fathers of the faith. I got that from Ralph Wilkerson before he went to glory. I have it. I got stuff you would be, you'd be amazed if I even would tell you what I got from those early days. Well, it's time to let the body of Christ be blessed. Amen. So be looking for Benihin Institute. What, what is it called? Institute. We're about to release it by the end of this month. Online. And you guys can benefit and be blessed. So if you want to know more about that, you send me an email. To uh, Pastor Ben at Benin.org. That's Pastor Ben at Benin.org on when we're going to launch. And in addition to that, a lot of, th of things I want to teach. So here's the first one. Woohoo! <laughs> Can you say that? <laughs> okay, here's, here's what I want. I've never done, done this before. I want to begin uh, this Friday. I want to do two sets of teachings. 
The first one I'm calling preparation for ministry. Then the next one will be, I hear this, this is gonna, this is gonna excite you, training in ministry. Now training is what I'm gonna have you, those who will join the classes, you will get up and preach without knowing you're gonna preach. And I'm gonna get up and tell you if you're doing it right. I did that one time in OCC, twice in OCC. Ellen, you remember when I taught on healing for weeks and weeks and weeks, Bruce, you, you were there. Every Wednesday I would teach on healing, and on the last night I said, now it's time you all lay hands on each other. Miracles were happening. People were throwing wheelchairs, crutches out. The only other thing I ever did like that was when I taught on deliverance. I went for probably three, four months on Wednesday nights. And then I said, now that I taught you how to cast out <laughs> demons, do it. <laughs> and people began, I, I said, all of you that have, have, a, have a devil, stand up. <laughs> and people began standing up. I said, now all of you around them, cast the devil out. <laughs> it was happening like fire. You remember that? The anointing was so strong after that service, I wanted to stop at 7-Eleven. So Franco drives up. I get out. Someone started growling down the aisle. He said, get out of it. They began to manifest. People began manifesting. They were, people, people singing hallelujah were growling after hallelujah. We had to cast the devil out of them. Yeah. And I went on for how long? No, no, with that teaching. Well, weeks, weeks, and weeks. I'm going to do it again. Right in this studio. How many want God to use you? Put your hands up high. We start this coming Friday. I'm going I'm to begin with prepare for ministry. It's called preparation for ministry. And I did that years ago, and I'm going to renew it. I did it when we were in Orlando. Every, and I'm, this, is, this is a fact. Every person that stayed with me today is in full-time ministry. Because I said, you can't miss a session. I went through the whole Bible with them on how to prepare. What are the challenges, the troubles, the attacks that will come their way, how to fight and how to win. Then when, when I was done with them, then we did it in the church where I began training people. I said, now I'm going to show you how to do it. And I did it. The Lord spoke to me again to do that again before I go home to be with the Lord. I have 20 more years, let's hope. I think it's time to put all this on tape. Let me hear an amen. amen. So, 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 uh, I'm going to pass right now. Thank you, by the way, for your offering, sweet lady. I'm going to pass a card. Where's, where's the cards? No, the card, the card. Yeah, the white cards, the white card. Yeah, that's them. Okay. We're going to give you one, one of those if you are serious if you're serious about being trained for ministry, we start this Friday. The reason Friday is because then you, you can sleep in on Saturday and not have to get up early to go to work. So this, now I will do it probably once a month, maybe twice a month, dependent on how many of you really want it. How many of you want it? Put your hands up high. To be prepared and trained for ministry. And I'll probably bring some of the top people I know to help me minister, help me train you. So get ready for all that. So this begins this coming Friday. I want to see how many of you will be interested. So those that want it, just pass them, give them one, one of those. Can I, can I have the ushers help? Where are you gentlemen here? Come on, take half of this. And you take half of this over there and pass out to everybody that has their hands up. And I want your name. Please write in English, not in tongues. <laughs> and give us the name tonight and your email so I can send you the material and the time and all that you need to know, okay? You have to get that now. I'm not going to announce it again. Now, you uh, on, on line, you watching on TV, you'll just have to fly in. I'm not going to teach you online. It's not going to work. This is hands-on stuff. You're going to have to fly in on Friday. I'll be here Friday, okay? We'll probably do it in the other studio or maybe in this one. It depends on how many of you show up. And, and then once you get bit, 
because you're going to get bit. You, you'll say, I'm coming back. Because the stuff you'll receive, you won't, have, you won't receive anywhere else. Because I'm going to truly show you from the scripture, absolutes, like real, grounded material that you can't find no, nowhere else. In how to prepare for, for your ministry. If you feel God has a call on you, 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 you you'd want to come. So that's this Friday, 7.30, 7.30, not 7, because I want you all fed. I mean fed like have dinner before you show up. Because you, you can't learn well if you're hungry. So get your food and eat and then show up, okay? Yeah, because I don't want to feed you hamburgers. I want to feed you the word. I want to make sure your tummy is full, though, when you show up. And you're all awake and ready. Now, while you are while you're feeling all this, and by the way, those who want more info on the institute, that's different, okay? The material I will teach will be a part of the institute, too, and a lot of things I haven't even told you yet that I've done already on my own, on my own. Can you believe I climbed Mount Sinai twice? Taught on the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai. That will be a part of the Institute. Can you believe that Matt Crouch did for me something that no one had done ever? You, you can't believe how excellent I taught on the, on the tabernacle and he built it around me on computer. I was walking inside the tabernacle with, with a screen and then he, Matt Crouch, built the tabernacle for me. So I walked into the Holy of Holies and taught on the Holy of Holies and stretched my hand towards the ark and there was no ark in front of me till it all came out. The genius of Matt. That will be a part of the institute and so much more. Miracles from Oral's ministry, our ministry that we did called the, the, the Oral Benny Project. It was magnificent and so much more, so much more, so much more. Uh, oh. I can't even tell you all the stuff that's coming. So that's coming online, but what I will teach here will be online too. Because many around the world would want to be a part of that who can't come in here. Okay? But you'll have the hands-on stuff. Now, next Monday, next Monday, David is going to be with me. Uh, uh, Vladimir. Vladimir. We're going to have a live... Uh, Love World program for the young people. So I want all the kids to show up. Next Monday in the next studio, but I doubt we'll have space there. We'll probably have to do it in here. So all the young people come, and we're going to have young people minister to the young people on TV live about issues that we are, that these kids are dealing with today. All right? So he's putting it together with Vladimir, and some of you guys will probably be, be you know, a part of this. So you got a big following on, on social, on Facebook. How many people do you have on, on your... Just share this with them quick. A couple hundred thousand. And what do you show you? Uh, uh, testimonial videos. People getting healed in the public, Walmarts, grocery stores, the streets of Chicago. And his, it just... videos get like hundred... his, his, his videos get like hundreds of millions of views wow. regularly. Tell him your name. My name is Matt Cruz from Chicago, Illinois. And you, are in, you, you flew in for yeah, so some reason tonight. Ministry work for a week here, and then I extended my flight to Tuesday to be here tonight. These young people, and Ben, what God is doing through you, brother, is marvelous. You were with my, you had my wife speak for you in Hawaii. And, and by the way, I met that guy with the violin. Wow. <sighs> What is, what is his, his name again? Georgian Banoff. Yeah. He's coming here, by the way. I invited him to come and be with me for, and I'll probably have him here the 2nd uh, February 10. He's wild on the violin, that guy. He's very anointed. How many have heard of him? He's, he's going he's gonna to be with us, so you all show up. It's going to be fantastic. All right, so really quickly, tomorrow night live with Love World. With the Kunemans, we begin at 5 p.m. We, we are done at 7. We have to go for two hours. And then, of course, next Monday with all the young people. Oh, and this Friday, don't forget about, well, we'll let you know how many of you are interested. Okay. 
Let's get into the word now. Come on. Take your Bibles. We're going to get into the word. I'm going to take the offering after that and give it to the Kuhneman straight for, you know, after that. So I'm going to have the minister prophetically to you tonight. So let's just get into the word of God now. Now, I want you all to pay close attention to what I'm going to talk about. Because I believe there's a key that God is going to give us tonight for the anointing to be released on you as you've never known before. How many of you are uh, ready for angelic visitations? No, really, really, I'm, uh, put your hands up high. How many believe God is going to begin to speak to you through visions, Amen. dreams? Yes. Okay. Then you have to listen tonight. This is the next phase coming. I know it in my bones. I've lived long enough to be able to detect the change in the spiritual climate. There's a change that's taking place now in the climate, which is the voice of God's Spirit saying to us, get ready. Because before God ever moves, he changes the climate. It's in the words of the prophet Isaiah. When you read these amazing words of Isaiah. Now I want you all to listen. Because when, when, when you. Uh, I've shared this before. I don't remember when. And I wasn't planning on sharing this tonight. But I think I will. It talks about, in Isaiah 35, it says, The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. The desert will rejoice and blossom. It will blossom abundantly. And then it talks about this. It says, The glory of Lebanon. The glory of Lebanon. What is that? Ah, very good. When we were kids, the north winds would blow south from Lebanon and bring in a new atmosphere into Jaffa, and we would wake up smelling the cedars, the cedars. So everyone knew something is changing in the atmosphere, in the weather, because the north winds now were blowing south, and the north winds were bringing something fresh to my town. It created excitement. We were smelling the cedars of Lebanon. So whenever you read in the scriptures, the glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it in Isaiah. That means the atmosphere of the cedars. A time of growth. A time of rain. A time when the north winds blow out the smog out of the atmosphere. And so we would wake up and we would see the crispness of the sunshine that morning because the north winds were blowing south. When the south winds blew, they brought dust into Jaffa. It was all very dusty, very uh, not nice, not nice. It got into your clothes and to your hair. But when the north winds blew, oh, it was fresh. So whenever I read the glory of Lebanon, it's the change in the atmosphere. It's the winds bringing the fresh air with it, the bright sunshine. I'm beginning to feel that spiritually. How many of you feel the same spiritually? Yeah. Now, when that happens, you've got to start getting ready for the changes. Because the changes... Uh, if you read Isaiah, we're not going to go through that quickly, but I'll, I'll, I'll do it quickly, but we're, we're not going to through that, really, because it's not what I'm teaching on. It says, we'll strengthen the weak, we'll say to them who are of a fearful heart, be strong, then the eyes of the blind will be opened, and so forth. So, there we see something so powerful, 
that at the end we see the removal of the demonic in this chapter. It says the parched in verse 7, and the parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water. And it says where dragons had laid, there'll be grass and reeds, meaning the water forces them out. Think about the water pushing the dragons out. Now there's grass, reeds, and rushes. So I'm here to prophesy without any, any doubt in my heart. We are about to see the north winds blow south. And so it says in the Song of, of Solomon, let the north winds blow south and blow upon my garden that the spices therein may flow out. If you read the Song of Solomon, it talks about how the winds coming from the north will blow upon our garden, meaning our hearts, and the spices in our hearts will flow out, meaning the presence of God manifest. Are you listening to all this? Now, here's what you have to do. You have to begin getting the garbage out of your mind. So it says in Romans 12, a very familiar portion of Scripture, Paul the Apostle writes, he says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies now afresh as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or worship, and be not conformed to this world. Don't go backwards. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, perfect will of God. So, now, someone put it this way. You are not what you think you are, but what you think you are. I repeat, you are not, listen now, listen carefully. You are not what you think you are, what you think dash you are. Can I say it again? Yeah. You are not what you think you are, what you think you are. So it's not about what you think you are. It's what you think you become. And we all know what the Bible says. Proverbs 23, 7. As he thinketh in his heart. So is he. So our minds are the seed plots of our lives. The ground in which the seed is sown. That's our mind. And one thing that the crucified life is all about is when you detach the mind from the world. When you separate the mind from the world. So two and a half years ago, I'm sitting watching TV and God said, cancel Netflix. Just like that. With no warning. I was watching a clean program. I don't like watching dirt, of course. But God said, cancel it now. I called Lance, who, who works for us here. Lance came that same day and canceled it. We said, why are you telling us? Because I believe God wanted to prepare me for something higher in my life. Without the danger of Netflix. Because see, things come through. Without you even knowing, demons can find a crack and come through it. God wants the cracks to shut down. He wants no cracks in your life or your mind. He wants you holy unto him. So I've been teaching and preaching and ministering here for months on the cross. You all remember that. It's imperative you hear how you must begin now. Now that you made the decision, I will shut the world. Well, what must you do first? This right here. You have to begin to understand. When you sow a thought, you reap an act. When you sow an act, you reap a habit. When you sow a habit, you reap a character. When you sow a character, you reap your destiny. I'm going to repeat all that. Very important how it all begins. When you sow a thought, when you entertain a thought, you reap an act. 
When you saw that act in your life, you reap a habit. When you saw that habit, you reap your character. And when you saw your character, you reap your destiny. It's imperative that you begin to control the thought. Because the thought produces the act, and the act pr produces the habit, and the habit produces the character, and the character produces your destiny. So now you begin with the thought, because you're the boss here. Once you allow the thought to become an act, the act become a habit, you're in trouble because now it controls you. You can't control it. No wonder when the devil attacked Adam and Eve, he aimed at their minds. He began to sow distrust in the Lord when he said to them in Genesis 3, 4, he said, no, no. This is not what God, uh -uh, he lied to you. For God doth know. What you heard him say is not the truth, is what he was saying to him. For God doth know that you will become just like him. For God, because he had just said, if we eat, we die, or we may die. Oh, oh he said, no, 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 no. Because God doth know that in the day you eat, you shall be gods like him. He sowed a lie. And the second he sowed the lie, we all know what happened. He aimed at her mind. Now listen here. Adolf Hitler brainwashed a whole nation with lies. Because if you repeat it enough, it will control that mind. I was telling someone in the car a few days ago. I think it was Luis, about the power of words. That a man like Hitler could take a, a high-class, educated nation like Germany and brainwash them. We were talking about the power, please forgive me for being wrong, of going to the wrong Bible school. Now, someone I know in my family who was brainwashed, who went to the wrong Bible school. And now he does not believe in the gifts of the Spirit. He believes that falling under the power is psychic power. At one time he believed all that. But he went to that school and they brainwashed him. Today he's an enemy He's an enemy of the ministry that you and I believe in. He's been poisoned. But how can it happen? Words. Most people are receivers. They're not transmitters. Most people are always receiving, receiving. And the more you receive, the more you become what you receive. Very few people are transmitters. The transmitters are the professors and the teachers and the high ups and the important people. So you can control the mind of a child eventually by giving them whatever you want to give them at the time when they're ready. But then as they grow older, amazingly and shockingly, they still are receiving. And if you surround them enough with that lie, they'll believe it. So no one really thinks for himself. We all think what others tell us to think. That's why the word of God is so vital to our lives. Because the word of God will saturate through your mind. Where you become the word. You live the word. You talk the word. The word controls you now. God begins to have you. But think about what I'm about to say here. Think about what Lenin could, uh, did back in the days of when the, when the Tsar fell, when the Russian Empire fell. One man brought communism to Russia, controlled the lives of millions. What did he have? Words. 
You think about what they, what they won without having to use the army. First, they captured the minds of men and women. And then made those men and, and women what they wanted them to become. I will never forget watching the Nuremberg trial. I was shocked. This is in the day when I loved history, history, a lot of history. Today I don't watch history, I just read the Bible. But years ago I, would, I loved history. I knew more about history than most of you would even know. But I was watching the Nuremberg trials. And you know what? In a, in a way, I guess it was good that I learned that stuff when I was younger. They, they began to question a witness on how many people he killed uh, in the gas chambers. And he sat on a chair and began to talk about how many people he killed daily. He gassed daily. And then he talked casually, very relaxed, no guilt on his face whatsoever, about, uh, and that's what we were talking about in the car, about um, how he had to perfect the killing of human beings. So he said, well, he said, we were not doing that good. We were only killing so many thousands a day. And then we had to invent some new gas and this and this and that to kill more. He, he, he said, we succeeded with 20,000 a day. And he was sitting very, very casually talking. And the shock on the faces of the people in that Nuremberg uh, hall. So the, one of the military, U.S. military men was questioning him. And he said, are you not guilty? Don't you feel guilty? Because now he was a witness. They brought him in as a witness. And to their shock, he began to talk about how many people he killed. And he was not at all uh, troubled about it. And then when he was asked, now you can watch this. This is all history. And they're all in shock looking at this guy like, how can you talk so casually about it? They said, uh, don't you feel guilty? He said, do you feel guilty when you kill a rat? Do you feel guilty when you kill mice? And they all looked at him in shock. To him, it was no different to kill a human being than a rat. Because he was brainwashed to believe that Jews are no different than rats. As a Nazi, he was brainwashed. That he saw no difference between killing rats and humans. You see the power of words. Why, can, why can't people understand that these murderers that kill human beings, radicals today in the world, who blow up people, and they are happy about it. Believing that God will reward them. God has told them to do it. Brainwashed. The power of words. So some fellow begins to fill them with hate. Keep talking hate. Go kill him. Go kill him. Go kill him. It's not long before he'll go kill him. And believe he's doing it for God. That's what the world is facing today. There's many people today out there being brainwashed by hateful men and women. Hate has great power because the words can pierce right through the mind. The Bible, that's life. You begin to fill your mind with this word. Love your enemies. Do good unto them that hate you and despitefully use you. And these words, once you read that over and over, you will become a man of love. Why? Because you read this. Love your enemies. Do good to them who despitefully use you. Forgive. All the beauty of the Bible begins to shine through your life. It begins with your mind. Are you listening? Yes. 
No vision, no revelations will come to you. No angelic visitations without cleaning this. That's where it all begins. So, in many ways, the mind needs to be saved. Because our minds were marred by sin. Therefore, our mind needs salvation. Now, the Bible talks about the mind. And here's what it says about it. The mind, the human mind, number one, is corrupt. In Titus 1.15, it says so. It says our minds before our salvation were corrupted. So when you think about the mind, you have to realize you're dealing with corruption. Something that's been corrupted by sin. So in Titus 1.15, it says unto the pure all things are pure. Unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is, no, is nothing pure. Even their mind and conscience is defiled. It's corrupted. Uh, in 2 Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it talks about that the mind of unbelievers is blinded. So, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not. So the mind, number one, if you don't know Jesus, is corrupt. Anyone who doesn't know Jesus, he's blind. And then hostile. Because in Colossians chapter 1, it talks about that the mind of those that don't know the Lord and don't know his word is hostile. It's an enemy of God. It says in Colossians 1.21, here's what it says. Make sure you write these scriptures down. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works now are reconciled. But at one time we all were enemies of God in our mind. We were hostile to the Lord. So think about the mind as being the seat of corruption, the seat of blindness, and the seat of hostility. I'm going to say something that troubles me to say. I see uh, how often parents are too busy to spend time with their children. And their children are glued to an iPad. They are glued to an iPad. They're receiving all their information from the iPad. Not their families, the iPad. That's the world. When we were kids, there was no internet, no iPads, no iPhones. It was an, an innocent world. So we would sit and listen to our parents and our uncles and aunts about what happened to them in their life, and everybody would laugh and talk. And it was innocent. But we didn't have the crime then we have today. Because we heard good things. Good things. The songs on radio all had to do with family and wholesomeness and good things, you know. The things we saw on TV were always good things. So we all grew up free from that corrupt, blind, hostile mind. Because it was family, neighbors, friends. The songs in our culture were all about the beauty of life. Today, it's not that at all. So you parents, I think it may be time you take the iPad away from your kids. Because you need to spend time with them. Let them hear your voice. More than the voices are coming through some machine. Because you don't know what's coming to them while you're sitting because you're tired to deal with it. That mind. That mind. So, through the gospel, amazingly, God appeals to the intellect. Because listen to Isaiah 1.18. Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. He appeals to the mind. Come, let us reason. Where is, where, where is reason? Up here. God is saying, I want to talk to your mind. 
Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Wow, what, a, what an amazing truth in the Bible that God appeals to the mind of humanity. Because he says, come, let us reason. God knows the door to the soul. The door to the soul is the mind, the human mind. The door to the spirit is the human mind. Now listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. Salvation does not call for blind faith. Salvation calls for reasoned faith. God wants you to think about it. God wants you to understand it mentally. Faith. You think about it. Reason. With God. I said to a lady one day who was confessing she's healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. But she would not accept that she was sick. I was preaching in a big church in Denver. I walked down the aisle. I said to a lady, the Lord tells me you, you have cancer. She says, no, I don't. I said, yes, you do. I said, the Lord is telling me now you have cancer. I don't have cancer. I said, lady, or I'm hearing God, or I'm going to quit the ministry right now. God is telling me you have cancer. She would not accept it. So we got into it. <laughs> I said, I know you have cancer. Like, I know my name is Benny. I said, I am not leaving here till you talk the truth. Tell me the truth. Because she was afraid because they had just had a guy come to their church. Who preached faith. And the guy said publicly. Not to confess the negative. So she would not confess. That she has cancer. Now the pastor sitting on the platform. Was not very happy with me at all. Because I just would not budge. Finally the lady started weeping. I mean like heart crying. I'm not supposed to say, and she's crying this, I'm not supposed to say it. I'm not supposed to say it. Because she had been told by the preacher who came to the church, don't say it. And then I got upset. I said, lady, church, here's what I said. I said, faith does not deny fact. I said, faith will change that fact. Nobody ever said to Jesus, I can't say it. The guy said, I'm blind. He said, I am blind, and the Lord changed that. Because faith does not deny the fact. It changes the fact. Because God wants you to think it, reason it, understand it. Don't just deny that you have cancer. The second she said, and I said, okay, lady, tell Jesus you have it. Lord, and she cried, and the power of God hit her. She fell on the floor in her seat, and she got up screaming, the pain is gone, the pain is gone. Amen. The whole church was rejoicing except the pastor. <laughs> I shook their theology. It was one of those faith, word faith, shook it up. I said, God says you don't deny fact. Real faith does not deny fact. So, so we have to change our mind. So we have to make a decision. Now, please, keep, stay with me. It's us that make the decision. It says in Isaiah 55, 7, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. So we have to say to ourselves, I'm not going to think that no more. I repent and I will not think that anymore. We decide, I'm not going to allow these thoughts. So the minute we say that, God begins to give us the, the promise and he says this, I will put my law into the mind. Jeremiah 31, 33, I'll put my law into their mind. So before we can live God's way, we have to think God's way. 
You can't live God's way till you think God's way. This is what the Bible means. This is the beginning of what the Bible means by renew your mind. You make a decision. I will no longer think that. And here's what has to happen. The minute you make that decision and you begin to clear the mind. You see, think, think about a garden. Your mind is like a garden. You have to clear it and then you plant it. But first you clear it. So you have to begin to say to yourself, I will not entertain these thoughts. The minute you begin to take action, you take this, that decision, uh, it, will, it will follow, you will, you will see begin, you'll begin to see uh, growth in your life. So now let's talk about clearing it and let's talk about planting in it and then I'm done. So we are called to clear it. Now, something happened to me in the last two and so years. I have no desire. I can tell you that. I don't know what happened to me, but I love it. I have no desire to watch TV. That, that TV never comes on in my home. Never. I won't allow it. I have no, no, de no desire to watch news. Nothing. Simple. You come to my house, that TV never comes on. You'll never see any channel coming through that TV. And those who come to my house will tell you I'm right. I won't allow it. And I don't feel at all uncomfortable. I've never had more peace. In the morning, I'm into my Bible. In the evening, I'm in my Bible again. And I'm more joyful and peaceful than I've been in years. Because I made that decision two and a half years ago. No more. Bye-bye. Because -bye. God said, cancel. When, when, when he, he said cancel, I took that act, not realizing God would give me strength to take another act. And now it's like, ah, liberty. I have more time now for the word of God. <sighs> the precious presence of the Lord. It's just, I mean, I've, and I've been talking to you about this for months. But I'm telling you what I did so you can do it. You have to begin clearing the mind. Now, in 1 Peter 1.13, and you know the, the stuff I had to, to clear was kind of the history stuff. I, I kind of lost my desire for history. So, you know, who cares? The Bible says in 1 Peter 1.13, gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up the loins. That's in 1 Peter 1.13. Make sure to write it down. Gird up the loins. Now, in fact, I, 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 I'd like to read that to you because I'd like to explain something. In ancient days, they wore robes. They had garments. But, but let's, let's just read this quick. He says, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, hope to the end, for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So when he talks about gird up the loins, he is, watch this. Hello, watch me, watch me, watch me. In ancient days, they would wear robes, and the robes uh, would belong, and so they had to kind of uh, tighten them up. So they would take like a belt and put all the loose parts together with a belt. So they didn't trip and fall. That's what it means by gird up the loins. This is loins. Gird up the loins of your mind. Take all the mess and fix it. Take all the loose parts and tighten it. So what is he saying? He says, tighten the robe. Because otherwise you will trip. You'll be hindered. 
you'll fall. So when they wore that robe, if there was no belt around it to hold all the mess together, they would trip. They would have to hold up the robes like this. Well, why hold it up with your hand when you can put a belt around it? I tighten the thing up. So you're free to walk without tripping and falling. Without you doing that spiritually, you will trip and fall. So Paul, uh, I should say Peter, said, gird up the loins, the loins of your mind. Deal with what hinders. Deal with what impedes. Now, that word, gird up, means prepare your mind for action. Like you prepare your body for action. Now, the robe is not in my way. I'm not going to trip and fall. I'm free from tripping, so I'm going to walk. I'm prepared, prepared to walk and run. Action. Our minds are loose. They like that old robe, loose. What do I do? I have to control my thoughts. But how do I control my thoughts when they are so loose? Ah, very good question. I'm going to deal with that. You have to begin clearing the negatives. And here's what the Bible says. You clear it with the word of God. You pound your mind with the hammer of the word. Is not my word as a hammer that breaks the rock in your mind in pieces? It, bam, it's right. Is not my word as a fire? The word of God is the hammer that breaks what's in your mind that is hindering you. That's why many people, I've talked to some who have filthy thoughts in church while the pastor is ministering. I heard from people who I really know who told me how difficult it is for them to sit in church because the filthiest thoughts hit them while the pastor is preaching. You know what they have? A loose robe. <laughs> they keep falling, tripping. It's out of control. Hey, you're listening. It's time for them now to take control. And you begin with a decision. The best decision you'll ever do is what Job says. I have made a covenant with my eyes. I will not look upon a maid. I just won't look. <sighs> I knew a man here in California. Powerful. Anointed. <gasps> oh, dear God, he was anointed. Became gay. I called him one day. I said, can we talk? Hmm? I said, how can you do this? He said, I happened to walk by a store. And I saw naked pictures. And I looked. And I looked. I walked away and came back and looked. He said, something attacked me. It's the look. I have made a covenant with my eyes not to look. You make a decision. Uh-uh. I will not look. That is the most difficult and the easiest decision if the word is there. It's difficult if the word is not. So how do you gird the robe and stick it up and make sure it's not going to trip you? You first make a decision. I won't look. Shut that thing off. I walked into my home. Somebody was there. From England. 
Suzanne wanted them to see Mr. Beans. So I came in and said, shut it. Come on, Benny, now please. Okay, Mr. Beans. I don't think he's funny at all. <laughs> he cussed one time, and then I steam came out of my eye. Shut it! They all shut it. Because you don't know what's coming. You laugh. Okay, you laugh. But then he will cuss. Don't trust the devil in those people. You want to laugh? Why don't you laugh at something holy? You cannot trust even the commercials anymore. They're actually worse than Mr. Bean. It's not about the show. It's what comes before and after. Or during. They learned their lesson. Mr. Bean was shut down. Because we want to be nice to our friends. But we just haven't seen the program before. So we thought, oh, he's as good as he was five years ago. What we don't know is how corrupt they've become. Don't you understand that the world has, has become more corrupt by the day? No. Shut it. It's a tough one, but you got to do it. So, I'm almost done. Impure thoughts. Matthew 5, 28 talks about, Jesus says, if you look at a woman. Now, listen to what this really says. In the Greek, it has, if you keep looking. Jesus said, you'll sin by looking. But if you look at the Greek word, it's often looking. <laughs> it's not one look he was talking about. It's that glued, that focus, that you begin to, uh, you're unable to break from it. That's what is sinful. So the Lord says in Matthew 5, 28, he that looks at a woman. So the Lord was not saying anything about a thought. He was talking about the act. Because the thought is where the act begins. The act is when the guy is staring. And looks and looks and looks and looks till the demon says, I got you. That's the problem that Jesus was dealing with. So, so he said, if you look upon a woman, what he was saying is, if you allow the devil to take hold of you. I had a guy in church one time in OCC, he said, <laughs> poor guy, I felt so, so sorry for him. He said, Pastor Benny, you got to help me because I'm going to pluck my eye out. <laughs> so what? He said, I'm going to pull my eye out. So what on earth are for? He said, because Jesus said, if you can't, you got to pluck your eye out. It's better to go into heaven with, with one eye gone, not to hell. I said, man, just calm down here. <laughs> he said, I can't help, but I keep looking at girls, looking at girls, and I pluck my eye out. <laughs> so I had to talk to the guy. I said, the Lord is talking about that look that keeps looking, that keeps looking, that keeps looking. You have to say no. That's what he means by pluck it out. Doesn't mean put your hand and pull that thing out. <laughs> Poor guy. He almost did it. He almost pulled his eye out. Poor fellow had to calm, calm him down on Sunday morning. <laughs> so you have to nip it at the butt, as they say. You know, you got to break it. So it's that looking often. It's, like, it's that... Uh, you know, it says something very interesting about uh, Potiphar's wife. It said she fixed her eye on him. Fixed her eye on Joseph. That's what it means by look. You can't let go. So if you look at, at uh, what happened here in, uh, in the book of Genesis 39, 7, it says she fixed her eye on him. She couldn't let go of that because that's the sin. It's not the one look, two look, two, three look. It's that the steadfast look. It's I'm, I'm done. Because the devil says, whoop, he pulled you right in. 
That's what happened to that guy I talked about earlier. So 2 Peter 2.14 talks about whose eyes are full of adultery in the scriptures. So it's it, the minute people, and this is, the, this is the danger. This is why I'm ministering this. If you really want God to start using you, if you want to see change in your life, people, you can't keep looking. It's time to stop. 2 Peter 2.14 says, because if, if you don't, you're going to end up with having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin. Get that show off. Get rid of that magazine from your house. I know, I'm sorry. I'm stepping on your toes. No, no, I, in fact, my aim is, is to break your legs. I don't want you walking into that store and getting that magazine. Bam! Then God will heal your legs. I'll break them and God will heal them. I just don't want, I don't want you, I don't want you going there. Yeah. Remember what Job said. I will not, I made a covenant with, with my eyes. I just will not look upon a maid. So what we have to do is. If you are polluted in your mind, God will forgive you if you confess your sin. But let me tell you something. Prevention is better than cure. It's much easier to prevent it than to cure it later. So, all right, you're all polluted already in your head, or some of you are. All right, confess your sin. Say no more. God will forgive you. But I'm trying to help you from not doing it again. And ending up in bondage to Satan. And a corrupt mind. All right. <laughs> I read something. I laughed so much. You cannot stop a bird from lighting in your head, but you can stop it from making a nest in your hair. I like that, huh? You can't stop it from landing on my lovely uh, hairspray. <laughs> Man, I got enough hairspray tonight. My, my hair has become a mighty weapon of war. <laughs> but make sure you don't let that thing... Build a nest. I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Number two. Number two. Anxious thoughts. Be free. Clear the anxious thoughts out. Because anxious thoughts are fear. Full of fear. The Bible tells us we are free from fear. Don't you remember? And I'm skipping a few things here. God has not given us the, the spirit of fear, right? So now it's time to clear all that out. Clear all that out. Turn, you know, I'm going to say something. The impure thoughts confess them, and the fearful thoughts pray them out. Turn your prayer. Oh, I love this. Turn, let me say it like this. Turn your fear into prayer. Turn your worry into prayer. Turn your anxieties into prayer. It, because it says, be anxious for nothing. But, but by prayer and supplication, let your request be, be known, and then peace will come. So you turn that into prayer. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is steadfast on thee. So God will do that for you. Number three, be free. Begin to clear earthbound thoughts. Because earthbound thoughts are thoughts dealing with uh, life. So Jesus said to us, don't look at the world. Don't fear these things. Seek first the kingdom, and all these things will come to you. So Paul talked about the mind, minding earthly things. So he said that the enemies of the cross mind earthly things, material things that become sinful things. The material things themselves are not sinful. But when you focus on getting material things, you become sinful. The love of money. That's what it is. Yeah. So he says, don't be bound to earth thoughts, to things that are earthly. Set your affections or your mind on things above. Now, how do I plant? Look at me all over. This is very important. The, the, probably the most important part is, is this. I've learned the secret 
of clearing. Give me just gentle music. Of clearing and planting my garden. I clear it by saying no more. Doop. Then I get into the Bible. Now it's not going to be happening to you as quickly as maybe in my case. But I caught on real fast the joy, the peace, the tranquility, the beauty of the Lord. And now the Lord spoke to me. And I share this with you already. I'm reading the Bible and I made it my mind. I have a different mind maybe than some, some, some of you. I made a decision to read my Bible three times a year in English. And at night Hebrew, but I cannot do Hebrew three times a year because Hebrew is deep. You have to be slow with Hebrew. But in, in English, I read my Bible three times a year. And here's what something said to me. Don't read chapters, read thoughts. So I broke the Bible. I just read the entire book of Ezekiel in four days. 48 chapters, four days, just like that. So how did you do it? Thoughts. You say, well, I cannot do that. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. Lift your hand and say, yes, I can. Yes, the first 10 chapters are one thought. If you look at the book of, of Ezekiel, the first 10 chapters are one thought. One straight thought, then it switches into chapter 11. So think about 48 chapters. Four days, I was done. How? Thoughts. I learned that when I read about two something years ago, I was reading Genesis, and I just noticed, whoa, look at that. One to 11, one thought. Because all you see in the Book of Genesis from 1 to 11 is the story of humanity. Chapter 12, Abraham. It switches. It goes from humanity to Abraham. That's another thought, Abraham. Abraham, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Abraham. So we go from chapter 11, or the end of it, to 24, and all you read is Abraham and Sarah. Then it switches to Isaac. Then Isaac is uh, actually a few chapters, 25, 26, 27, 28, stop. Now Jacob comes into the picture and goes to his uncle in 28, 28, 29, 30, 31, Jacob. Now he comes back home, 31, right through to 37, his sons. And 37 to the end, Joseph, except for one chapter. 38, I, I call that the detour of the Holy Spirit. Where he takes you back to Judah, who uh, goes to Tamar, and through that comes Perez. So we are, we're being reconnected to the land of the Messiah, basically. But th there, I, I, I began breaking the Bible. I thought, whoa, I can do the whole book of Genesis in how many thoughts? Watch this. 1 to 11, 12 to 25. 25 to 28, 28 to 31, 31 to 37, and then 37, six days. I could read the whole book in six days. Guess what? I did. I was so happy with myself. I said, I'll do it again. You can read the whole Bible four times a year if you do it like that. Like a train, bullet train. Some people cannot do that. I get it. I have reached now almost three and a half, year, uh, three and a half times a year because I'm going like a train right now. You can't believe what it's done to this head of mine. I think it, I eat it, I sleep it, I taste it. It's in my head, it's all over me. And all I think is Bible, 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 Bible. I can't get away from it and I love it. Amen. Renew your mind. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now you begin to plant it with this. Listen here. When you read it, you have to break it first. And most of you can't break it into the thoughts I just mentioned. So break it into half thoughts. 
like Genesis 1 to 5. You break it in half. Then 5 to 11, you're done. But you go back and meditate on what you read. That's what drips it from the head to the spirit. That's how you plant. That's how you plant. And suddenly it drips from the head to the heart with meditation. And next thing you know, out of the issues of the heart comes life. Hallelujah. God begins to bring life through. And suddenly you think, I'm so strong. I feel so good. Even physically I feel good. My doctor looked at me a few days ago. Dr. Crandall looked at me and said, I have never seen you look so good. He said, you look better than I've ever seen you in your life. I said, thank you, Doc. I don't know what's doing it. Maybe partly vitamins. I just think the Bible is really having an effect. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the people. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost, all of you. Lord, let the Word dwell richly within them. Let them begin to speak the Word in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melding their hearts unto you, Lord. Because that's what it says to us in the Scriptures. I want to read this to you, and I'm going to pray this over you. Pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, I'm almost, I'm, I'm, I'm done, really. Philippians 4, 8, I'm going to pray that over you. Because here's what, what he said. He said, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, any praise, think on these things. But here's what he also said for you to do. He said, let the word of Christ, Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell richly in your, in your heart, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and in hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And then suddenly he says, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do in the name of Jesus, because it's impossible to act and do till the word is filling your mind and heart and notice that the word of Christ dwell in you richly first in your mind because he says wisdom teaching admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual song singing with what grace in your heart you go from the mind to the heart wisdom is in the mind and now the heart gets acting with grace father in the name of Jesus I pray Give them the power to clear that mind. Give them the power to say no to the things of this world. Give them the power, Lord, to clear all impure thoughts. All thoughts that are filled with fear. All thoughts that are earthbound. And begin, Lord, by the Holy Spirit to help them plant their new garden with the Word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. When we come back in February, I have a, I, I have a message more powerful than this one. How to enjoy spiritual nourishment. I'm going to show you how to study the Bible, biblically speaking, getting it in your system. Lift your hands and praise Him in the Spirit. Come on.
with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise with a heart of thanksgiving I will bless thee O Lord I will bless thee O Lord I will bless thee O Lord with a heart of thanksgiving I will bless thee. Before I give the platform to Hank and to Brenda, just five more minutes is all I need. In Luke 21, 25, we're told that not to fear when calamities begin on earth. I believe that we are about to see financial collapse in many parts of the world. And I believe as long as Trump is in the White House, we're all right. And let's believe that he will win the coming election. But eventually, the economy will, will not be as good. From what we read in Luke 21, that we are going to see days so frightening we've never seen before. But I love what it says in verse 9. It says, when you see these things, fear not. And then in verse 28, Jesus said, when you see those things, look up. So we are to do two things when the trouble comes. Don't fear, look up. Also, you are a covenant person. Say, I am a covenant person person. Say it again. Now, the Word of God makes it clear as a covenant person, when these things come, they will not touch you. Because it says so in Job chapter 5. We're going to take the offering, but I want to read this because I think this is so important. I'm going to start reading Job 5, beginning at verse 20 through 22. In famine he shall redeem you from death. In war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it comes. So when these things begin to happen on earth, and they will... It says they will not touch you because it says you'll not be afraid of destruction. In fact, at destruction and famine, you will laugh. When it begins to hit, you will laugh. It will not touch you. Lift your hands and say, it will not touch me. I'm giving you the word of God. In the word of God, it's, it, it also clearly states... In Psalm 37, now, and I'm just giving you the promise, and I'm going to read verse 18 and 19. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. No lack in your life. Say no lack. no lack. The Bible goes on to say to me in Psalm 35, 27, that God delights when I am blessed. Hallelujah. Now, the Word of God makes it clear we are in covenant. In Deuteronomy 8, 18, we read that God will prosper you to keep His covenant. You have to believe that. And the Bible declares in Psalm 112 that God is going to use your giving and that's going to happen real soon as a mighty weapon against the enemy. Because it says, praise you the Lord, blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights in his commandments, his seed will be mighty on, on the earth. 
Verse 3, wealth and, and riches shall be in his house, because that's God's promise. And so unto the upright, those who are people of faith, there arises light and darkness. And then it says something powerful in verse 6. He shall not be moved forever. Verse 7, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Verse 8, his heart is established. He shall not be afraid. And then we see something powerful. It says that his giving, verse 9, he hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever, his horn or authority is exalted, and the wicked will see it, be grieved, gnash with his teeth, and melt away. Meaning his giving drives the enemies away. Because giving is a weapon in the hands of the Lord. Now, how many of you love Jesus with all your heart? Put your hands up high. You cannot love him without honoring him. Honor the Lord with thy substance, Proverbs 3, and the first fruits of all your increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses will burst out with new wine. Giving is the key in honoring the Lord. And when you honor the Lord, he says that a faithful man will abound with blessings. Proverbs 28, 20. The minute you honor him, you'll abound with his blessings because you're faithful. And the word of God has a warning that poverty will come to him who will not listen to the word. I just gave, gave you the word. Lack and poverty come to those who deny the Bible. It says so in Proverbs 13, 18. But when you honor the Lord, he will honor you. When you give to his work, he will bless you. No famine will touch you. No financial trouble will ever affect you when you are a giver. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless your people. Hold that envelope. In fact, can you just pass them out because I want to pray over them quick. I want to pray over the people quick. Pass the envelopes because I want to pray over God's people. That God will bless you in 2020 more than he did in 2019. This is the first meeting of 2020 in this building. I'm going to ask God to bless your finances this year way more than he did last year. Can we believe God for three times the, the blessings? At least three times the blessings? Lift your hands and thank him in the spirit. Come on. I'm telling you, I, feel, I, I, I believe that. That God's going to bless your finances this year three times more than he did last year. This is the year when you will invest in property. This is the year when God will begin to bless you more than ever. To secure your future. It's his word. I'm giving you his word. Poverty is not his promise. Lack is not his promise. Prosperity is. God delights in the prosperity of his servants. Can you pray in the Holy Ghost? Come on. Lift that envelope to heaven. Father, in Jesus' name, three times the blessings this year. Three times the blessings. Three times the abundance. No lack. Every need will be met and way more than that this year in Jesus' name. Hank, I know you, you have a word about to give you that platform within minutes. And then I'm going to have you go as long as you want to go tonight. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, people. Go ahead and sow, sow your seat now. Make it to Benny Hinn Ministries, those who are here watching BHM social media, those watching Love World, you make your checks to Love World. Send it to Love World if you're watching Love World or call the number on the screen or you can text it. It's all there for you. Those who are in the studio, you make your checks payable to, Be to Benny Hinn Ministries. And those who are watching the social platforms, social media platforms of BHM. 
Hallelujah. Now, would you just help me here and let's pray for the people watching in their homes. While you give, you, you can pray. In Jesus' name, I agree with you for abundance. I agree with you for divine abundance. That this will be the year of amazing financial miracles. That the needs in your life financially will all be met this year. That you will buy the home you want. That you'll be free from your debt. In Jesus' name, be blessed. In Jesus' name, prosper. In Jesus' name, let your authority come alive. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now you sow that seed. All right? If you're ready to give to the Lord, just wave it to the Lord. Just wave that seed to, to him. Come on. Let's wave it like that. Hallelujah. All right. Let's pass the offering buckets. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands in your name. Okay, those that fill the card, put it in the bucket also. Those that fill the card, don't forget the card. Say it again now. Oh, yeah, oh, say, don't put them in the, sorry. Those that have the card, don't put it in the offering. Give it, give it, give it to them. Lori or Pam, give it to Lori or Pam. All right. Can I give this offering? This dear lady gave it earlier. I want to put it in the, all right. Thy loving kindness. I want you all to stop praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on. I just feel something is happening here. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Hank, are you almost ready? Yes, I'm ready for you. Keep praying, keep praying, saints. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. Keep praying, people. Keep praying. Keep praying. Because the prophetic is going to start flowing here. Pick up the key, please. Thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do in this house. Now, finish the offering, finish the offering. The Lord sent this man of God and his wife. I want his wife up here too in just a little bit, but you just do it when you're ready. I believe the Lord has put a mighty word in his heart for America. And I believe he's put a mighty word in his heart for other nations. And tonight, God sent him here. I'm going to wait till you're all ready to listen. You in your homes, get ready to hear the word of the Lord. Tomorrow, the whole two hours are his. I'm going to just introduce him, and he'll minister with his wife. 
But I really believe tonight there's a word God has put in his heart for this nation and for you. So I'm going to give him the freedom he needs. And as God leads him, I'm going to ask you to stay because we don't always have amazing people like Hank and Brenda. So no matter what, don't look at your watch. Because the greatest things always happen at midnight. Always. God brought Egypt out at midnight. We're not going to go to sleep. We want to hear what God has to say tonight. Let me hear an amen. amen. The hour is late spiritually. I had to minister the word that I had because I didn't want to rush. I think it's important. How many feel the same? Say amen. amen. But at the same time, what this man has, has, has to say, and dear Brenda, is also important. So I'm going to go sit down. It's all yours. All right. Well, good evening. And those of you that are watching, I do want to say this, talking about midnight. I've already been in the future, not just because of the prophetic, but we are on central time, which is obviously, I call it God's time. It's midnight. But I've been fasting for the last 10 years, uh, Pastor, just so you know, every uh, night from about 10 at night till about 6 in the morning laying before the Lord fasting. So anyway, you all got that? How many got that? So my, my body clock is on other times. So, But anyway, I do have a word that I want to share with you. But I want to just piggyback for just a moment because I came with a word tonight. And those of you that are watching, the true prophetic is what God is trying to establish right now in the earth. And uh, what I call throne room prophecy. There's three realms of information that come. There's the first realm, the media, what you hear uh, on the earth, or what people are saying, that people pick up and they begin to prophesy it and, and they declare that as the word of the Lord. That's why there's been a lot of confusion. For example, in the 2016 election, people were saying this person was going to get elected, this person was going to get elected, so much confusion. But then there's the second realm of information, which is where the enemy operates. He's the prince of the power of the air. It's where it's the witchcraft realm and the psychic realm. And the enemy longs to get you to become the devil's prophets. And there is so much being spoken right now by the mouth of the enemy, and people are repeating what the enemy is saying. Let me give you an example. When Y2K took place, and people were in fear, and whole television shows and things about storing up and, and getting people prepared for this cataclysmic event. I had something happen on August 23rd, a visitation from the Lord of 1999. And, and as the servant of the Lord came with a scroll, said, you are to declare before the people of the earth that this is not what they're prognosticating. And the spirit of fear is trying to cross the new millennial line ahead of the church. And this nation will be hit if they agree with the spirit of fear. And so people attacked uh, the word of the Lord. They said we were crazy, that it wasn't going to be a big deal. And I'm not saying that there isn't a certain wisdom of certain things. But what happened is the body of Christ, because the enemy works by agreement. He operates, gets you to agree with his agenda. God works by agreement, if two or more agree. And so there was an agreement that the church pulled fear into manifestation. And as a result, a year later, 9-11 happened, and this nation and the earth has never been the same. We are now facing something in our nation right now, a division that has grieved the heart of God. And those of you that are watching, maybe in the nation that you're in, God is not happy with the arguing, the fighting, the division, the strife. And this is not coming from the Spirit of God. It's coming from a demonic realm. From the second heaven, the chatter, the speaking, to get us to hate what is taking place, that God is trying to release a good visitation of his spirit and his glory, 
The problem is too many of us are misinterpreting and misreading the signs. And so the enemy wants us to pull this fear, this division, into manifestation. So now the networks begin to pick it up. And they begin to speak lies and fake news. And get you to believe certain things, just like he said, a brainwashing of your mind. And it's creating strife. It's creating division. Why? Because the enemy knows that a kingdom divided cannot stand. And so if we can repeat the words out of the second heaven coming from the enemy, then we become the enemy's prophets. And yet God has something very sacred and very holy, and I don't perform for anyone. I'll tell you why. God dealt with me years ago, and he said it's the only office that he ever just said this about. He made a comparison to John the Baptist, a prophet. And you know what it was? What did you come out to see? And too many prophets and prophetic ministers have got caught up into performing. And so what they do is they take the sacred heart of God, which is what prophecy is. It's his heart. It's his mind. It's his will. It's his intent. It's his agenda. It's his perspective. And then taking that throne room perspective in his heart and then releasing it to the people. You don't say any other words beyond what he tells you. They never said about Jesus, who is this man that speaks with great accuracy, even though accuracy is important. They thought he was speaking for Beelzebub. They said, who is this man that speaks with such authority? Because he came from heaven, but he spoke the Father's heart from the throne room. And as a result, there was an authority or a weight on what he said. Now you say, why am I saying all this? Pastor was speaking about being very careful about what we're allowing to enter into our our minds. Turning off the television. You ever thought, why do they call it a medium? Because it's projecting... And channeling certain things to get in to your mind, your home, to affect cities and nations and territories. So we have to be very careful. There's a reason that when you go into the book of Acts, chapter 21 and verse 9, it talks about the house of Philip, the evangelist. And it says that he had four virgin daughters that prophesied. Now why would it talk about his daughter's virginity, coupled with prophecy. Because there's a hidden message that there has to come from all of us who want to prophesy and hear the word of the Lord from the throne room. We cannot be people who've been sleeping around. In other words, contaminating ourselves with things and pulling it into existence. I was troubled years ago as I started seeing too many people leaving the earth. And I said, God, God's ministers. And I said, Lord, I don't understand this. What is happening? Now, this isn't everybody, so don't please don't judge and think that you know why somebody went in, you know, to heaven prematurely, for example. He said, Hank, there are two specific things that I want to speak to you about. And this is why it's important. Because the heart of God is so important. It's so sacred. And it requires a purity. It requires a discipline. Those of you that are young in ministry, it's important that we have this purity. Where our motives are. What is our motive? Well, we want to glorify God. We want to glorify Him. We want to share His heart. We don't want to go beyond that. And so God said to me, the reason why some are being removed is because He said, pride. And He said, in fact, some people you will not recognize on the other side when you see them. And I said, it's because of their glorified body. And he said, yes, but they were so clothed with pride when they were on the earth that now they are clothed with humility, you won't recognize them. He then said, I want to show you why we need to prepare the ministers. This is why what you're doing is so important coming. we got to prepare the generation that is rising up because God is trying to bring his glory in great manifestation. Fear has been pushing it back. The other thing is, God knows that if he releases his glory at this time, here's why some are being called away soon. Are you ready? That's what he told me. He said, you can work iniquity and be anointed. Now, that's not a permission. Matthew 7. Prophesied in his name. 
did many mighty works in his name. But then Jesus said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. I remember Marilyn Hickey telling me one day, she said, you know what's dangerous about iniquity? I said, what is it, Marilyn? She said, iniquity is purposeful sin. Where God deals with you about things, but you keep bending and moving towards that sin. You can be anointed because the anointing is not what you are. It's your job description, Luke 4, 18. Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me. And then Jesus told us what it is that was his job description. So you could be anointed to do something in honor of him and be purposefully sinning and working iniquity. But when the glory comes, it'll take you out. And some people, the glory started touching upon them and they didn't change. And God, by his mercy, had to remove them. This is a holy time that we're coming into. And here's what I want to do. Tomorrow night, you need to be here because I want to talk to you about a vision that I had on February 12th of 2019. My wife was at the office. I was at home. It was just a few days before Valentine's Day. And I was trying to get the house ready, and I was wiping the, the what do they call it, stovetop. And as I was wiping the stovetop, all of a sudden, I went out in the spirit, and, and I was carried. And how many of you have ever downloaded on your computer files, and you can see the rapid rate of those files and how they go down. As I was taken in the spirit, God said to me, he said, I'm showing you, and I literally saw, if Jesus chooses to tarry, 12 years into the future of what is going to take place in this nation and the earth. And and I'm not setting dates, I'm just telling you what he said. And he said, I can only show you 12 years because you cannot handle it. And it was like a rapid... uh, information being downloaded in me. I was seeing one event after another, 2020, 2021, 2022. I was seeing so much. And I said, God, why are you showing me 12 years? He said, because this is about my kingdom now. And he said, 12 also, there are certain things that I'm trying to establish and bring into divine order. When the pattern is right, the glory falls. First Kings 18, there was division in the nation. Ten tribes to the north, two to the south. The prophet took a prophet to come and to put the stones in order. And then when the 12 stones were in order, the glory fell. In Acts chapter 1, there were 11 apostles. Judas hung himself. So when the pattern is right, the glory falls. The lot fell upon Matthias. And then what do you get? Acts 2, the glory falls. God is getting us ready for the glory. I saw it. And he asked me a question. I was walking my two German shepherds in July of about 2016. And there was a cloud that was appearing off in this park that I was walking in. And I thought something was on fire and it began to swirl. And my two German shepherds literally sat in attention and began to look up at the clouds. And I knew this was not a fire. Then I felt the presence of God. And I began to kneel down and weep, and I was trying to bury my face. I didn't care if anybody was in the park. I tried to bury my face as low as I could in the ground because of the holiness that I felt. I wanted to take off my shoes. And God spoke from the midst of the cloud to me, and he said these words. And I want you to listen, and those of you that are watching. Because not only are we in a new decade and a new year, we've entered into a new era. October of 2015, the Spirit of God began to prophesy, and he said, Watch when you see a former president be laid to rest, and on the very day that this happens, that he passes away, that the soil of your nation, United States, shall shake. Look up, for you have entered into a new era. And so, how many know this happened in 2018, George Bush Sr.? Died, and on the very day that he died, there was a 7.0 earthquake in Alaska. We've entered a new era. And so, as I was with my dogs and that cloud appeared, the voice of God said to me, and listen very carefully, said, What does a nation look like filled with glory? I was shaking. I said, I cannot answer it. He said, That's correct. What is coming Your eyes have not seen. Your ears have not heard. Your heart has not even entered in 
what I am going to do in the nations of the earth. He said, when glory comes, things begin to change. Matthew 17, when the glory touched Jesus, his raiments changed. When the glory comes, listen very carefully, and those of you that are watching, there's some troublemakers that God's got his eye on and he's about to put his finger on who've been making trouble for this president, they're making trouble for this nation. They're making trouble for the nation that you're in. And when the glory comes, Isaiah 6, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and what? His glory began to fill his temple. We are in a very dangerous season right now because the Lord said some have, because of their divisive spirit, have opened a door now. And there, this is the reason that some are going to be found weak, sick, and die. Because God's glory is coming to set things in order. And we're going to see it in the next 12 years. You say, well, what, what is this all about? Listen to me. Pastor was talking about having our minds renewed. And it was a very incredible teaching. But I'm here to ask you a question that the Lord has put in my heart. And then we're going to minister to you. And I feel a word that we need to release over Iran. Here's a question that God wants to ask us tonight, and I say this in all humility. The first time you really hear of Jesus speaking is in Luke chapter 2, verse 46, where it says that he was in the temple speaking and asking questions. Here's the question he's asking. It's Mark 8. Are you ready? Verse 22, here's what it is. He asked a blind man, it's the only miracle, to my understanding, that I'm aware of that he ever prayed for somebody twice. It's the only time I know that. Why did he pray for a blind man two times? Because there is a need for a continual adjusting of our perception, our perspective, what we see, how we think, how we process. In Mark chapter 8, verse 22, he took the man out of the town of Bethsaida, because who built towns? Mankind. And he brings them out into the open for the purpose that when his eyes would be open, he wouldn't see man's perspective. He would receive God's perspective. Too many things are being said over the United States that has grieved the Holy One. Too many things are being said about this president that he put in office. That's grieving the heart of God. Because we're getting our perspective. How many of you have been before God and can honestly say that the Lord told you that he should not be president? I can prove to you that on 9-11, God said, for the towers that fell this day, 2006, 2007, 2008, there's recorded prophecies. This ministry here prophesied, out of New York, I will raise up a president that will bring this nation back on course. And then God said when it would happen. He said, look, United States. In fact, you won't let me call it America anymore. Because he said, every time you say United States, you are decreeing unity. But he said, in the 240th year, of the United States reign is when I shall raise up this president. On 9-11, he said these words. He said, and the people were there, they know. He said, you'll go to war, but listen to the voice of the Spirit now. In this place where the towers have fallen, I will raise up one who has been born here. Because there is a spirit that has been upon the nation through abortion that is trying to obtain a permissible right through bloodshed. We call it abortion. God calls it blood sacrifice. You have authority today because of Jesus' shed blood. Every time a baby is murdered in the womb, it's causing a certain authority in the satanic realm to affect our nation. And God said, I'm going to raise up a man born and raised out of New York City. And he said, and look to the towers. They represent something. What does Trump represent? 
Trump Towers, is that a coincidence? World Trade. And he said, for each tower, I desire to raise up. Listen carefully. This is all conditional upon how we pray. For each tower, I desire to raise a president up for two terms. To bring this nation back on course, but not just two terms, but two presidents. Now, you say, well, pastor, this sounds political. Listen, there were prophets that spoke to kings. There were prophets that had to speak correctly regarding kings so that the people would understand what God's agenda is. It's when the prophets get caught up and become prophets of the land and tell the people what they want to hear that we get in trouble. So God wants to ask us a question. What do we see? What do you see? Do you see good? Do you see evil? Are you afraid? When you hear about Iran, when you, when you hear words like what I'm saying to you, what do you see? Because, see, I saw something. In the future that God is wanting to bring for the next 12 years, should Jesus tarry, he said, I have declared this decade, and we're going to talk about it tomorrow, as the decade of difference. It will be good for my people and I will separate them as I did with Egypt and Israel. I'll separate them into blessing like they've not seen. And he said, this next decade, watch this now. He said, not only is it going to be a decade of difference, but he said, you're going to see my goodness begin to be revealed because goodness and glory go together. Moses said, I want to see your glory. And God said, the first thing, I will cause my goodness to pass before you. 2 Chronicles 5, 13, rather than speaking bad about America, speaking bad about the United States, speaking bad about the president, we need to be doing 2 Chronicles 5, 13. You know what they were doing? The Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. Keep reading. Then the place was filled with glory. We need to start speaking over the United States. Lord, you're good. Your mercy endures forever. Well, how do we know that? Because, listen. In 2016, I believe it was when they voted for same-sex marriage. How many of you remember that? And they lit up the White House. And I fasted for three days, and I said, God, please tell me. And here's my stupid question. And he didn't answer for two days. My stupid question, I said, God, did you know that they were going to light up the White House? <laughs> for two days. Two days I asked him, and I was getting no answer. Finally, it dawned on me. Of course God knew. So I changed my question, third day. I said, God, what did you do? Because you knew. What does this mean for our nation? He answered me, and I was surprised what he said to me. This is why we need our perspective adjusted. You know what he said? He said, Hank, when they lit up the White House in your Supreme Court, voted, he said, I turned and I looked at the mercy seat and I saw the blood of my son and I remembered my covenant and I have decided because the prayers of a few. I said, well, what about the prayers of the many? He said, many are not praying. They're speaking wrong. He said, the prayers of a few, I have decided to open a window. This is why, be careful, impeachment is not about taking a man out of office. It's about trying to impeach the agenda of heaven and what God wants because we've got a friend, are you listening to me, of Israel in the White House, a friend of the church, more reform can be done in the history of the United States regarding the church and what we are called to do. We have a friend of the child in the womb that doesn't have a voice. And God said, I am looking to bring a window open over the United States as I bring this vessel forth. And give this nation a mission of mercy. 
Mercy triumphs over judgment. Do not agree with the devil's prophets who are wanting us to speak the divisive things that are coming from those who do not fear God. They could half care less about his heart. And they could care less about his church. And to be honest with you, they could care less about the child in the womb. And yet God showed me something in this decade. There's a movement that's about to come. And he said, I'm giving this decade back to your children. That's why all of you that are here, Pastor Benny, that's why you're, you're anointing. And your, your, your mandate is going to shift even more towards the young. Because it's been given to the children. And here's, here's why this is important. Because for the two towers, are you listening? Two terms is his desire. Two presidents. You say, well, what does that mean? Listen to me. Because I'm going to share with you one last thing we're going to minister. Here, here's what this means. When I saw the future... I saw the word wreck up pence. What's wreck up pence? Payback. God has a trumpet that's on purpose supposed to be loud and obnoxious because of the level of corruption that none of you in this room or you that are watching really understands the level of what has been done in secret places behind closed doors. That is about to come out. And it needs someone who is not going to bow down to it. And then God, all these things that are being taken out, Ten Commandments. There's going to come a woman that's going to rise up on the Supreme Court that the Lord is going to bring there. That is literally going to be a very compassionate woman. And you know how the scripture talks about how there's an enmity between the woman and thy seed? There's been an enmity. And it's been through abortion. And there's been a woman on the court that this has been happening. But now guess what God's going to do? He's going to raise up a woman. It's going to be part of his plan to topple the courts to where you're going to start seeing rulings like 7281163. And major laws are about to be overturned in favor of righteousness and justice. Okay, this is important. How many hear me? Okay. Now, I want to say this as Pastor, or Brenda, as you get ready to come here in just a moment, because I want us to play, we're going to pray in the spirit. By the way, if you want to learn to prophesy, Acts 19.6 says that they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There's something about getting over in the spirit that will get you connected to the heart of God and to the voice of the Lord, okay? But one of the things that I want to say this in our perspective being adjusted, what do you see? Remember, he had to lay hands on the, the blind man two times. And when he had his eyes open, Jesus, as what pastor said, made him look up. Why? To get God's perspective and to keep God's perspective. That's what throne room prophets do. They come and they give you a different perspective than what the news is saying or maybe what's being discussed in the land so that you can understand what is God's heart, mind, will, and intent. Now, here's what's amazing because when you look at this, all of a sudden he began to see men walking as trees. And I said, Lord, what does that represent? He said, there's a movement coming among mankind and you need to recognize that all of this that's happening, the hatred, all of the warfare that's happening. Notice how it happened in 2016. Why did it happen? They said there's never been an election like 2016. Because the number 16 or the number 6 is the Hebrew word wall. And it literally means a conversion of heaven and earth coming together. Hell is reacting to the glory that's moving. Hell is reacting to the agenda of God. And that's why he's stirring up hatred and strife and all of this. Are you listening? Because he's trying to counter what God is saying and doing. Mark 6, and I'll leave you with this. Jesus feeds the multitudes, and he sends his disciples out. He constrains them and says, get in the boat, go to the other side to Bethsaida. 
And he goes and he says, I'm going to go pray. And he begins to pray while the disciples are out in the boat. One translation says that they've been out there quite a while, rowing three to four miles. And the wind was contrary. In other words, there's opposing forces trying to buffet the church, buffet God's agenda right now, trying to stop what God wants to do. And all of a sudden, Jesus begins to walk on the water towards them. And the scripture says, as you look at the translations, the different ones, it says he intended on purpose to pass them by. It was a test. We're in a test. Are we going to choose God's agenda over what they're saying in the media regarding this nation, regarding this president? We're in a test. And there is a visitation of Jesus, just like with those disciples that's moving towards us. Here's the problem. They looked at the visitation of Jesus. Something good was trying to come towards them. Something good is trying to happen for the church. Something good is trying to happen for this nation. It's in process. Here's what they did. They called something good evil. Too many people are taking the chatter from the second heaven and from the first realm. And they're calling what God is doing right now. And they're saying it's evil. Because we need an adjustment of our perspective. Are you hearing me? So this is the heart of God tonight. And then I want to share with you tomorrow about the decade of difference and what we can expect. expect. Let's just go ahead and stand to our feet for a minute. I'm not going to keep you here real long, but I do feel like there's a couple people we need to minister over. Yeah. Okay. Listen, all of you stand up quickly. Um, tomorrow night, I just changed tomorrow to be here at 7. Because while he was speaking, while he was speaking, I just felt more people need to be here tomorrow night. And 5 p.m. is early for a lot of you because you have to work. So uh, how many of you need a word from God yourself? So he'll... he'll he, uh, Dear Pastor, Let's I do that minister. tomorrow night more yeah. where I will minister more over the people for the sake of time because I feel like tonight was Please. I needed to be honest with you about the heart of God. That is the most important thing whenever I do is, God, I have to communicate your heart. And here's where I'm at. And this is something that I'm sure that you live this way too. And that is this. Whenever I speak or prophesy, and you can go to our website. Is it okay for me to yes, not try to advertise the, the website? Free, please. It's uh, hankandbrenda.org, or you can go out to our uh, Facebook page. It's One Voice Ministries, Hank and Brenda. And here's why I'm bringing it up. Uh, there's a lot of these prophecies that are documented that are out there. Let me give you an example. For uh, They're talking about retaliation and, and the president being a warmonger. Days before there was any situation happening in Iran or any retaliation God prophesied and he said, there will be a retaliation. How many of you read that prophecy that's here? Okay, so you know I'm telling the truth. And is that not true that it was before there was anything? And God said, they're going to accuse the president of being a warmonger. Because this is why we've got to have the heart of God. Because if you're listening all the time to the news and you're listening to what people are saying, you're going to miss out and misread the sign. Jesus is trying to bring something good to the United States. He's on a mission for mercy. And we need to agree with that. God's goodness is trying to touch this land. And I promise you one of the ways it's going to be for a season, like Pastor said, we're going to see the economy really begin to go to a place to finance the gospel. And really that's what it's about. It's not just so that we can just get rich, but that God can have provision for uh, the vision that he wants to give through the church. But anyway, the Lord said something very powerful. And you can go out there to those social media pages and see that. He said that he was uh, going to put his feet upon Iran. And he said, when I put my feet upon Iran, he said, look for the soil will shake. Do you know the day that they fired those missiles into, uh, I believe it was Iraq, against those uh, bases from Iran, 
there was two earthquakes that happened that same day in Iran. So a lot of these prophecies, obviously, they're coming to pass, and you can, you can look them up. But my heart is this, and, and I always want you to hear this. Talking about perspective, there's been enough people that have been speaking what I call Joel 2.2. You know what Joel 2.2 says? It says it's a day of, do, of, of gloom and, and, and darkness and clouds and thick darkness. Well, all we've been hearing is the doom and the gloom, but they don't understand that the darkness and clouds of darkness is not the same as gloom and darkness. It's the same Hebrew words for when God came down in his glory and Solomon in 2 Chronicles 6 verse 1 says, this dark cloud is the glory of God. When Moses looked up and saw God come down, he saw the thick darkness where God was. We've heard so much doom and gloom, God is trying to adjust our perspective. For a season, he's coming with mercy. And, and, and I had a vision just the night before I went on Sid Roth. I was just on his program just a few uh, weeks ago. And I saw God, both of his hands, trying to... There was a whole arsenal of stuff that he wanted to bless the nations with. And people had their hands lifted high, the church did. And, and he was trying to put this in their hands and they wouldn't take it. They wouldn't take it. Some were. And, 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 I, and I cried out in the vision. I said, no, God, why won't they take it? And he said these words to me. And listen to me carefully, especially you in, you in the United States. What 2020 represents, and I'm not a Hebrew scholar, it, it represents either an open hand like this or a hand like this. How many of you heard that before? And he said, Hank, the hands represent, in one hand, it represents, do you know, 30 million people didn't vote. Evangelicals, they say, in the last election. People get mad at prophets today, and I understand that there are those that, that maybe say things and, and uh, it's not credible. But I'm giving you God's heart and agenda. I'm telling you what he has planned should he tarry. But what's different about me and Samuel, the prophet, for example, he wasn't subject to a democracy. He could just go pull somebody out and anoint him with oil. I don't want to see God's agenda and God's heart be affected because we choose not to vote. Or we don't agree with God and vote according to what God likes. I'm not telling you how to vote. I'm just telling you you need to vote. But then you need to ask yourself some serious questions. What is going to give, like Paul the Apostle said, keep the door of the gospel open for the church? What's going to defend that little baby who never had a voice? Who's going to be a friend of Israel? And in the second hand, every, every prophetic word has to be mixed with prayer. Okay? And tomorrow we're going to talk more in detail about what God is saying in this decade of difference. You don't want to miss it. Go ahead. And then I want to... Oh, and wanna... now even so the Spirit says... Watch in this season what I begin to do among my people. For there shall be a great removing of scales from the eyes of my people. And the Lord says, watch as you begin to see a great awakening come among my church and even among my ministers. For you thought that some had been blinded or cast to the side. But the Spirit says, watch, I'm about to use some that you thought could never be used in that way. But the Spirit says, see, there shall even be those that shall come come from the world of entertainment that shall begin to be those that will be spokesmen for my kingdom and for my purpose for the Lord says watch a great awakening that begins to come among my people in this season for even in this year says the Lord as the seasons begin to change and move the Lord says you will even see a great revival of miracles and a great revival of those things that many have prayed and cried out for and the Lord says, yes, this shall be the time when the prayers of my people that have been prayed over the last decade. And some have said, when, Lord, when, Lord, when shall it come? And the Spirit says, watch even as it begins in this year as an awakening hits my church. Hallelujah. And the Spirit of God says, in the days of the crucified Christ, in the last moments 
And he spoke his last words. And he gave up his ghost. I spoke and I declared and I said, Arise, my love. The earth shook and the veil was torn. And God says once again, I speak from the place of the throne room. And I say to my church, this is the time that I'm calling you to arise in a new decade. But watch the soils of the earth, for they shall shake, says the Lord. Why is this happening? Because a veil that has been placed, that has caused some to be deceived. And to be blinded by the work of my hand in this time. The veil is being removed that I will cause that which has been undercover. That which has been hidden away. To suddenly come to the light. For there has been too many lies, says the Lord. But now my spirit is coming. It is the spirit of truth. And my truth is marching forward, says the Lord in this time. So keep your eyes upon this nation. For look to the eastern part of the United States. Such signs, says the Lord, of what I'm doing and what I will do. For there shall be power outages in unique places. Do not fear when this takes place. For God says when the lights come back on, you shall see in those places There shall be those that sat in darkness shall see a light of a different kind, for they shall be awakened. Keep your eyes upon the 13 original colonies, for they will say, how can it be in these places that the soil shook? The Lord says, I am causing things that need to be brought down now to be shaken. But California... I stand in your midst today, says the Spirit of God. And I say to you, calling for you, I am calling for you. And God says they have said, for too long, you shall be divided. You shall split away. God says, do not make me laugh. For there is a dividing and there is a breaking away of a different kind. Because you are looking at the wrong fault lines. For there have been those seated in very high places that God says it's time for them to be shaken. It's time for them to be removed. And there is a California of a different kind that shall begin to arise in this new decade. For you will say, I remember the days when fires consumed our soil. I remember the days when there was drought. God says, look now. Feel the wind that shall visibly blow. You will say, what is this, this gentle breeze that some will testify? God says, then watch and look very closely. For there will be a mist, and it will begin to be that which I will form in the clouds and cause it to begin to rain upon you, California. And I will do this as a sign. For there will be those who gather once again upon your streets, upon your beaches. And it shall not be the old, but God says the youth of California shall lead this once again, says the Lord. They will gather in the public places. They will gather in the stadiums. And they will say, great is our God. Let me speak to you now, says the Spirit of God, concerning Iran. For Iran, the Spirit of God says, you are not destined to be destroyed at the hand of oppressors. Or at the hand of the enemy. For I have placed my feet upon you, Iran, for this time. And your soil will shake yet again. And when you see this happen, look up. Because I will shift 
I will shake and I will remove the leadership that has oppressed you. And the reason this is happening is because I have heard the sounds of the people of God who are crying out before me who have been oppressed, says the Lord. They shall have their hour and they shall have their day of freedom. And God says, listen carefully. Not only is my feet planted upon Iran, but I am running swiftly throughout your nation, Iran. And things will begin to change. And the veil that has been upon the women shall be removed. And when this happens, there will be a greater unveiling of ancient spirits that have held men in a place of deception and deceit. But they shall cry out, Yeshua! Why is this? Because Iran, when the name Iran is declared and mentioned, it will be known and it will be seen that I, the Lord God, ran through you. I ran through you. I ran in the midst of you, says the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. 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 Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lord God of heaven, we ask you for a fresh visitation of your spirit. Not of our might, not of our power, but by your spirit. I pray right now. Come on. It was, uh, it was the prophet Elisha that prayed for the eyes of the people, his servant to be open. I prophesy, and those of you that are watching, I command your eyes to be open, to begin to see God's perspective. I release upon you a greater prophetic anointing in the name of Yeshua. Receive it, let your eyes be open, that you will see the plan, the will, the agenda of heaven. I speak now and I declare, let there be a release of your eyes to see your ears to hear the perspective of God, the spirit of truth in the name of Yeshua. It's released now in the name of Yeshua. In the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Karamosa. Imbre setile cruz sambre rebaso remangro se barikite. Recito rumondo rebasa de kitse de bota. And you have the baso recayase. And you thought that you have seen a lot, says the Lord. But son, the Spirit says you haven't seen anything yet. For the Lord says, I'm only beginning to allow the blossom to come forth. For you haven't seen yet what I will do. And the Lord says, get ready for there is property that will come to you and be added to you, says the Lord. And you shall be set on a place where you will be noted among men and among women and I will give you my words and my voice for the Spirit says but note this night son you haven't seen anything yet hallelujah <laughs> And so now this is the time and the hour is upon you. For there are things that you prayed even 10 years ago and better. Things that you asked for that looked impossible. And it still seems as though they've yet come to pass. But the Lord says, watch now. Even in this year as they begin to come back, come to pass one by one, two by two, three by three. And the Lord says, yeah, those things you prayed, I didn't forget. And they shall come to pass. <laughs> And the devil thought he could try to steal from you unjustly and take resources out of your hands and rob from you. But the Spirit says, watch, payback is on the way and it's coming now. And this is the time when the Lord says, I'll be your rear guard and the devil won't be able to rob from you any longer. Hallelujah. Botanish ne rusa barcalo remando sariba no se prite levuna man grande i pare cona no su parkishne rezando ah 
c'est vrai. And so it's th the time now that the whirlwind begins to stop for it has seemed like it's been one tornado after another and every time you make some progress it seems like you go way on back but the Lord says I have brought you out this night that that season shall come to closure and the Lord said this is the time when progress shall overtake you and the plowman shall overtake the reaper and you will see fruit like you've never seen before says the spirit Kado Musa Briba Chinibo Rukuna Yatur Masato Rusalia Tune Rosarle Grumushne Abardo. O oh, daughter of God, for know this, that your prayers are marked in the heavenly place. Your prayers have been marked in heaven. And even the angels now, the harvesting angels are going forth. And they are bringing to pass those things have been marked by the Son of God. They have been marked in the throne room place. And so the Lord says, daughter, know this, that I've given you a prayer anointing that shall come to another level in this time. And the Lord says, when you pray, it will happen. And it'll be noted, says the Spirit. Alwoche watu kungangi watwange le supri alushne, lache watanguanginia wo seprade shulu. And there have been those that have criticized and those that have said this and done that and they have had a, a certain mindset but the Lord says watch that I bring around people that even turn their back at times on you the Lord says I am gonna bring them all back around and the Lord said like Joseph was you will stand before them and minister to them and you will be able to give them the word of the Lord and the love of the Father so the Lord says watch those that I bring back around and suddenly they'll wake up and the Lord says you shall see your season come where you will be exonerated daughter of God you put in my suit recursion my daily kunana resale to nashe and so the Lord says, I'm going to give you a new vision, son, for you have been tracking along one direction. And the Lord said, it's all been of me. But get ready, for there is a new place and a new level I'm about to bring you to. For as you keep yourself before me and you're faithful, the Lord says, watch, I'm about to open a whole new pattern and way of doing things. And the Lord said, it'll come to you supernatural. And I will send those that will talk to you, speak to you. But the Lord says, this is the time. Get ready for the visions. And the dream. Ruto Purishilo Kuayachiniwaka Lurekita Pushna 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 And so get ready for that prophetic, that prophetic, that prophetic anointing. It shall come out, and the Lord says, Watch. Watch, watch it come bubbling out of your spirit. And the Lord says, when it does and as it does, the Lord said, get ready, open your mouth, son, and speak. Now, bef before we turn it over to Pastor, Hallelujah. I feel very strong in my spirit. I just want to say this one thing. And I don't know how the Lord will move tomorrow, but I feel like before we go tonight, I, I want to encourage everybody, put your hands on your eyes. Because as Hank was, I was sitting over there, Pastor, as Hank was talking about us getting a perspective for the nations, what God wants to do corporately. I feel like for some of you, the, the devil, the enemy, has come to cloud your perspective over you and over things pertaining to you. And sometimes this is the way the devil works. I mean, you know, we're, we're not ignorant of his devices. But he tries to come and get us to be clouded. So that we are so caught up in our stuff that we don't see what God wants to do on the larger scale. So I want to pray this. That as you put your hands on your eyes. Father, right now for every person in this room where the enemy has tried to bring a clouding. Some of you have lost your prophetic vision. There's prophecies that are yet to come to pass. And Father, for each one of these that is in this room that have gotten discouraged, they have allowed the pressures of life to blind their vision. Right now, in the name of Jesus, 
We declare that your eyes are opened afresh Amen. to the anointing, Amen. the purpose, the destiny, Amen. the blessing, the vision of God for your life. We say in Jesus' name that you begin to see again. You begin to dream again. You begin to hear God afresh again. We prophesy in the name of Jesus right now to your eyes, the mind of your heart. Be open. Come on, shout it with me. Say, be open. Be open. Be open. Just receive that in the name of Jesus. Come on, shout to God. Shout to God. Shout to God. Hallelujah. Now listen, listen, listen. There's an amazing anointing here right now. Lift your hands and receive. Thank God for it. You kids, you kids, you're going to pray right now and just move heaven here, okay? Tomorrow, listen, listen, tomorrow, dear God, how many of you feel the anointing here? Makorate papa al feminte, kinti lamo miente, kinti rama. Woo! Tomorrow night at 7. What time tomorrow? Not 5, 7. God changed it, we changed it, we told the TV people they're fine. We go live tomorrow at 7. You all come here at 7 tomorrow because you'll. Look, many of you have work, so don't worry about five. Yeah, God, man, they know it's wrong. Makora ta ta ta. Yelbe, yelbe, kinti maro, komto, komto, muntu la me. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, every high place will be brought low. Every low place will be brought up. Prepare the way of the Lord. Every Asherah pole, every Baal altar. Come on, in every congregation. Let there be a great awakening. Oh God, revival fire. Repentance will come. Oh God, oh God. Go, 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 go. I can pray. Fire of the Lord, let it come. 2020 is the year where Jezebel will be bound and Elijah will come out of the cave. Elijah, release the spirit of Elijah. Matata, souls, signs, and wonders. Oh God, Keep praying, man. Keep praying. Yes, 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 yes. Release angels, oh God. We declare every 50 states will be born again. We declare, oh God, that California will turn to you. Oh God, we pray for a gold rush out of California. Let the revival fire start from north to south, south and west in San Francisco, oh God, in Sacramento, in Los Angeles, in San Diego. Oh God, we declare that California belongs to you, Jesus. California belongs to you, Jesus. We declare that burning hearts are coming alive. We declare that burning hearts are beginning to burn for our generation. We declare that Generation Z will be the generation who overturn the tables. Oh, we declare now that their hearts are rising, that their lights are illuminating now. We declare that we will not be a dead generation, but a generation of awakening and fire and glory and power. We declare fresh waves. We declare fresh wind. We declare fresh rain. Oh, no more pain. No more pain. Precious now. We declare for the wind of the spirit to begin to blow. Every demonic plan and wall begin to break now. We declare that there's an awakening. 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 Thank you, Lord. Father, I declare in this place tonight that awakening has happened from sea to shining sea from east coast to west coast from west coast to east coast everything is shaking tonight the ground is shaking i decree and declare every dead thing is awakening every dead please place in your people's hearts is awakening tonight i decree and declare the people of god are rising tonight i thank you father for signs wonders and miracles becoming the normal every single day holy fire falling on your people every single day people awakening every single day i thank you lord hallelujah father we thank you now in jesus name 
that you're changing the nature of the church, that we will not just gather around one specific anointing, that what you placed in us will begin to unfold. And as we sit at services, our neighbors get healed from the oil that's dripping off of our God. We thank you that you're awakening people that have a revelation of the spirit of wisdom and understanding of who he is in Christ. I thank you that the gospel, that the gospel, that the gospel that you afforded in our death, resurrection through Jesus will become a rever revelation in us. God, we thank you now in Jesus' name that you're re resurrecting the morals of this nation, the values of this nation will return back to you, that in God we trust, that in God we have faith, in God we believe. We thank you for the revivals in the education department, God, that high schools, God, will, will be shaken by your power. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. I want all the kids, get down here. Come on. All the young people, get on the floor and pray. All the young people, get down here and pray. Come on. We declare the fire of God is burning. Come on, lift your hands. We declare there is an awakening coming to the nation of America that the church is about to arise out of the ashes of imaginations of men, but the glory of God will be seen. We declare and prophesy that there will be revival in the White House, that the nation will see glory, that America will return back to God, that there will be a restoration and, a, and an overturning of unrighteous decrees. We declare that the church of the living God is rising with power. He is rising with authority. He is rising with dominion. We declare the keys of the kingdom of heaven are about to be released upon a generation who is hungry and thirsting after righteousness. We come against the spirit of suicide, the spirit of oppression, the spirit of depression. We call upon the angel armies of the Lord to encamp about the remnant of the Lord. And we declare there are 50 righteous. There are 100 righteous. We say glory in America. Fire in the White House, fire in the schoolhouse, fire in the courthouse, fire, fire, fire. Come on, lift up those hands. I declare that every young person in my generation would be full of passion. They would be full of purpose. They would be full of power. God, that even tonight you would ignite a holy fire in our hearts for the things of God. That we would learn how to pay the price for revival in awakening with fervent prayer. God, that you would develop an appetite in us to fast, release of grace and a hunger to fast, God. Make it a lifestyle in us, God. I pray, God, that you would break off every demonic power that's been hindering us from going forth in our destiny. Tonight we speak to every demon power, every spirit of darkness to lose her hold off of our minds. I say that we will live pure. We will live holy. We will make a covenant with our eyes. God, I thank you for your word. Let your word, God, be the compass that we rely on for direction. That every day we would get into the word until the word gets in us, God. Put a burning desire for the things of the kingdom. God, that we would advance your kingdom because we're living pure we're living holy god i pray that you would give us ears to hear eyes to see god that we would rise up in this hour god that we would feel be filled with boldness with passion with courage that we would preach the unchanging word of god the gospel with power and authority god let there be an outpouring of your spirit where your people wake up god let the scales fall off give us ears to hear in the name of jesus lord lift up the veil and let us see how you see let us carry your heart and let us go forth with the gospel in jesus name let us move beyond our boundaries father god we glorify you father god we exalt you in this place father god we declare that the truth of your revelation is being pierced into the hearts of your people father we, de we declare now in the name of jesus this is a generation who will hold your truth god who will manifest your truth father god who will live out your truth god the revelation of the gospel father god will be manifested throughout our generation god father we declare that the fathers are turning back to the sun the sons back to the fathers, the mothers back to the daughters, the daughters back to the mothers. Father, we declare in the name of Jesus that the glory is about to hit this place. It's about to sweep over like a tsunami, God. And the hearts of the young people will be awakened with fire, God. And they will love purity. They will love righteousness. They will love holiness. They will love the tender heart of God. Father, we declare that your thoughts are becoming our thoughts. Your mind is becoming our mind. Your heart is becoming our heart. Your ways are becoming our ways. Your words are becoming our words. In the name of Jesus, we declare now, Father God, that we will walk as you have called us to walk, Father God. I declare that we are getting the revelation to see ourselves how you see us and not how we see ourselves. To see ourselves seated in Christ in heavenly places. To operate in a place.
place of authority, in a place of government, in a place of seated high above principalities. Father God, we declare now gang violence is seizing, abortions are seizing, manipulations are seizing. In the name of Jesus, we declare now same sex marriage is seizing in this place. We declare now, Father God, we come against it and we stand on boldness, God. We stand in purity, we stand in righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, touch! Holy Spirit, touch! Touch the viewers, touch the nations, touch the city, touch! Mountains are being moved! Mountains are being moved! Not only are they moving, you are destroying them in the name of Jesus! Right now is the time of surrender. How deep do you want the Lord Jesus Christ this very second, this very moment? Surrender. Give your entire life. Give your possessions to the Lord. Put your everything on the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is he your Lord? Is he your Savior? Right now is the very moment. Right now, this very second. He is your Redeemer. Church, wake up. Surrender everything. This is the moment. Ages doesn't matter. He needs your heart. All of it. Your entire soul. Your entire existence. Your future. Will you surrender right now? It's the very second, the moment. He is encountering you right now. Holy Spirit, you are touching. It is the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Surrender, surrender, touch, touch, touch. Holy Spirit, touch, touch. Mountains be moved. It doesn't matter. Jesus is Lord. Father, I, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you. Ra- lift your hands and see people. You're raising up a generation that is not rooted and grounded in hate. This is a church that's not about religion, Lord, but we are rooted and grounded in love. And when people see this generation, when they see us, Lord, that we will be about denominations, we will be about a ministry full of pride. What platform can I get? What following can I get? What can I do? But we lay our life down we say, we are yours to command. We are yours, Lord, a fully surrendered body of Christ, walking in the unity and the power in the love of God, yeah. and in the, in you confirming your word, which is grounded in us through your signs and wonders. We give you praise for that in the name of Jesus. I release it. We declare in the name, lift your hands if you would, uh, that there is a release of the power of God uh, that is ready to rise upon the nation of America. We declare that a generation uh, of apostles and prophets uh, are about to rise up from the high school, from the colleges. We overturn the decree of the unrighteous who will death in the womb and there will be no more slains in America. No more mass slains, uh, but we want slains of the Holy Ghost. Uh, we declare a fire baptism uh, in the schools. Uh, come on, pray, pray. Open your mouth to we declare that we are overturning the judicial decree and we go before the courts of heaven and we declare the unrighteous the unrighteous decree against the unborn in America are being overturned and we will see the legislation of abortion overturned in the name of Jesus we will see all marriage restored between one man and one woman under God we will see the courts of America put the, the Ten Commandments back in the school houses we will watch the pop come up right we decree in the name of jesus victory is coming fire is coming healing is coming restoration is coming we declare 2020 is a year of the double 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 for our trouble we will roar as the lion of the tribe of judah we will roar we will roar and the enemies will be scattered and joy will be our portion and peace will be our reward Come on, everybody, lift up your hands in this place. Everybody, lift up your hands right now. I believe this year, the Lord is going to release financial harvest in your family. The Lord is going to release financial harvest in your family. This is a year for America to prosper. Come on, if you believe it, begin to lift up your voices and pray right now. Come on, fi- come on, supernatural debt cancellation. Debts will be canceled in Jesus' name. This is a year where your family will be healed and be restored. Prodigals are returning. Come on, lift up your hands right now. Father, we pray that the mantle of Billy Graham, the mantle of Reinhard Bonnke, let the soul winners arise. Soul winners, Jesus. Everybody lift up your hands in this place. The Lord is going to release signs and wonders. He's going to baffle your mind. Everybody say this. America America will be saved. America America will be saved. saved. My children 
will be saved. My family will be saved. Come on, give the Lord a big shout of praise. Hallelujah. Listen, tomorrow at 7 p.m., we're going to start again. Who's going to arrive tomorrow? Who's going to come tomorrow? Please bring a friend. This place is going to be packed. So tomorrow evening at 7 p.m., please do come because there's going to be another level. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. We love you. Shalom. Have a great night. And as you are leaving, excuse me, as you are leaving, please make sure that you hand your cards to the ushers at the doors as you are leaving. Thank you very much. God bless you.